Good evening, everyone. And we welcome you to Cannon McMillan High School for tonight's matchup between the Baldwin Fighting Highlanders and the Cannon McMillan Big Macs. Cannon Mac at four and two overall. Baldwin at one and five. And a great complex, great facility here at Cannon Mac for tonight's matchup. And we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Austin Bexler joined alongside Tyler Zeman. Going to be with you, my friend. No eat the cool hand tonight. We'll have him back next week. But so this week, Tyler for Baldwin coming off of the loss to Peters Township, who arguably, I don't even know if you could say arguably, is the best team in 5A. It was a tough matchup, but Baldwin was able to strike in the final minute and change, something that the two previous opponents of Peters Township was not able to do at all. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much it really means in the big picture. They're one of the few teams to score against Peters Township this year, but I think offensively for for some moral victories, I think that's a, a big thing for Baldwin going forward. We saw them over the uh, last couple of games just struggling to get anything offensive going a few first downs in the first half uh, in, the, in the last couple of games is not good enough they're going to need to find something you know whether it's changes um, tactically or whether it's just digging deeper or offensively they're going to need to find that kind of switch and flip it on to get this offense moving so far for Baldwin this year, the 56 to nothing win at home against Brashear, week zero to open up the year. That really got a lot of positivity going and a lot of great things, but it's been five losses in a row since then. And tonight at Cannon Mac, as the Fighting Highlanders overall, with four games remaining on the schedule, three of the last four are on the road. Cannon Mac at four and two, Baldwin at one and five. We'll be back to preview it here for week six action, seventh game of the year, coming up next on the Fighting Highlanders Sports Network. Watching the GBU Life pregame show on the Fighting Highlanders Sports Network. I love the things I build and the people I build them with. But I got plans that go beyond buildings. I move some of my savings into a GBU Asset Guard annuity so I can retire when something unexpectedly great happens. You made the right call. You chose a GBU Asset Guard annuity. A multi-year guaranteed annuity which works to grow your funds at a locked-in interest rate for a term of two to five years. Two to five! My son's got this sweetheart football scholarship. Every game, I'll be there. Thanks to some help from GBU Life. At Mmm -mm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mmm, mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. If you need insurance, you need an agency that's sharp. The Sharp Insurance Agency is an independent agency and distinguish themselves by providing face-to-face -face customer service and reviewing coverage to provide the best possible value for their clients. Hi, I'm Mike Sharp. Lean on my years of experience in the Pittsburgh area to find you the best insurance coverage because when insurance companies compete, you win. The Sharp Insurance Agency. Contact us today to have your personal or business insurance professionally reviewed. Trout Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. All right, Tyler, let's get right into it. What are the keys to the game? on either side in this matchup to try to pull out a victory. Yeah, so for Baldwin, it's got to be, first and foremost, Lockdown Singleton. He is one of the senior leaders on this team, a guy who has the defensive X factor, if you will, to blow up anything um, on the that's going for the other team and, offensively. You know, he's already had a good night. He was just named the homecoming king. Yes, he has. So he is he's pumped up, fired, ready to go. He's also a handful of sacks away from breaking the sack record here at Cannon Mac. And he also has uh, nine tackles for loss. He's just been a monster defensively for the Big Macs. And for Baldwin, you have to take chances. It, it hasn't been a good stretch right now. They need something. you got to be willing to go out there and take those risks at maybe swinging some momentum or creating some of your own luck here and there. For Kenny Mack, it's got to be support the quarterback. A new 
uh, quarterback in tonight as Mike Evans is not ready to go. They have to support him, protect him, and kind of supply him with the with the tools he needs to be able to go out there and succeed tonight. And overall, just find a way to dominate, whether it's in turnovers, whether if it's long drives offensively, or just the explosiveness on defense that Canamac has. They have to find a way just to dominate because Baldwin's really struggled these past couple of games. It'll be Ty Jansma at quarterback for Cannon Mack, who is a freshman that's only thrown six career passes at the high school level. But the Cannon Mack band on the field, it's been a pretty decent year for the Big Macs at four and two overall, one and two in 6A play. For the Fighting Highlanders though, overall, as we alluded to a little bit earlier, it was a great start to the year. Against for sure, the 56 to nothing win, but since then, it's been you know, downhill action at times. Thomas Jefferson and Peters Township, not much offense, especially not being able to put up double digits. That Upper St. Clair game, third of the year, where Baldwin was really in the second half able to find some offensive consistency after especially John Kozar was taken out, Nico McCurak was put in. He's the starting quarterback we've seen the rest of the way for North Allegheny, Bethel Park, and Peters last week. Yeah, and it's one of those things for Baldwin. You open up the season with the massive win against Brashear. It's not the loss you wanted on the road at TJ, but you come back and you're very competitive in the second half against an upper St. Clair team that has been one of the powerhouses in 5A. And it almost feels like, did Baldwin take that step? Are they getting a little bit closer? But after that loss, it's really just kind of gone downhill for the Fighting Highlanders. We'll step aside as the National Anthem is played here at Kennemack. Sure, I'll be there at 5 a.m. I can binge one more episode. Let's face it, you don't always set yourself up for success. Five more minutes. Where are my work shoes? But GBU Life makes it easy with life insurance and annuity products to help secure your future so you have the freedom to do more of what you love. Congratulations! You did it. Retiring early must be nice. What are you going to do first? I think I'll sleep in. Secure your future today. Visit GBU.org. Shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle? Dean Honda is one of the largest volume dealerships in the Pittsburgh area, offering sales, service, and parts. Our service center offers competitive pricing and same-day service. If you're looking to sell your vehicle, stop by Dean Honda and leave with a check in hand. Visit us on Route 51 in Pleasant Hills or at DeanHonda.com. The following is a presentation of the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. Fighting Highlanders have taken the field at the sideline closest to us. Realistically, Tyler, compared to where we've been at a lot of different other venues, especially up at Baldwin, very high above the stands. Is it 68 degrees? There's a little bit of wind that's blown into the press box at seven miles per hour. But, you know, we got here today and I was like, ah, oh, thank you, Cannon Mac. We are not on the roof tonight. Yeah. We are not on the roof. It is warmer in here than it was on the roof a couple of years ago when we were here. I think it rained then. Yeah, yeah, and it was very cold. It was very uh, windy, 
a little bit of rain, and then it got dark so fast. But getting back to that, what I, what I was saying earlier about how close we are, we can practically, if we like, even just spoke out, you know, maybe shouted just a little bit, they could hear everything we said on the ball with Thailand. We're that close to them tonight. Yeah, can, like you said, compared to where we've typically been up in the press box at Baldwin, it almost feels like we're sitting at field level down here. It's like, uh, what? Uh, 10th row at the Steeler game. Yeah. Maybe the best way to put it. Yeah. Has the Big Macs on homecoming or just about to enter the field from their tunnel. And let's take a look. If we can get a shot of the field here of the lights have gone out. So really cool here at Kinemac. They have a bunch of different things that they do. Lights displays. And they've blacked out the stadium. Turned all the lights off. And there is a video playing on this new video board that the Big Macs have at the right side end zone. Really cool. They're having a video intro that's being played right now that the team waits for. Turn the lights back on and the beat drops and the team comes out and takes the field. It's really neat. As the lights have come back on, I think we're hearing that it was a little bit a little bit too light out for the light show to be as effective as maybe they wanted it to be. As the Big Macs are still in the locker room waiting here. So a little bit of miscommunication and confusion to begin the game. But hey, just about set to go here between Baldwin and Cannon Mac. We all kind of, I think Tyler and we were both kind of caught off. We were waiting for the light show to happen yeah. and... We didn't know what to say as the Big Macs now take the field. Baldwin also set and ready to go. As for the Fighting Highlanders, Nico McCurak at quarterback, the sophomore 5'9", 170. Looking to go out there and record his first career win as a starter. Entered the game against Upper St. Clair in the second half and has not looked back. And I'll let you, uh, Interesting little bit of mind games there. Baldwin standing at the end of the of where Kenimac was running out through the banner. A little bit of stare down between the two as Kenimac came out. So we'll see. I mean, this Baldwin team, they have to be eager to, to, to get back there and get back out in the win column after what they've gone through um, after the Brashear win. And, I mean, if you're Kenimac, what better way to, you know, just continue to produce the type of football that they've been playing on homecoming night so although it's non-conference there you can feel a little bit of of energy building here in the stadium baldwin captains keith minson john kozar andrew sharp evan good caden singleton one of the main captains out there for cannon mac including gino calgaro a ton of very talented players mason williams 76 to left guard out there as well for the Big Macs. Now Mikey Evans at quarterback is also a captain. Now he is not suiting up today. Was banged up in last week's game. So Mikey Evans will not play. It'll be the freshman Ty Jansma making his first career start. He's four for six in his career for 27 yards. No touchdowns, no picks. Very limited action. And that's something, Tyler, that Baldwin can try to exploit. Yeah, it's exactly. That's that's exactly what I think Baldwin's going to look to do. They're going to bring the pressure, I feel, early, try to throw Jansma off a little bit. But he has the weapons around him to do it. And, you know, that's a big hole to fill. When you take in, when you step into the quarterback role, replacing a guy like Mikey Evans, who's passed for more than 3,000 yards in his high school career and over 30 touchdowns, I mean, that that's a very big role. He's a guy who is able to distribute the ball very well and let the athletes do what they do best out in the perimeter. So Baldwin early on, I think they're going to try to try to get back in the backfield, disrupt Jansma and this offense as fast as they can. And Mikey Evans is the son of head coach Mike Evans here at Cannon Mac, who's also an administrator in athletics for the Big Macs. <laughs> he told me this week, I'm hard on Mikey, but... You know, it doesn't always go over well at home, but I'm proud of him. He says he maybe doesn't say that enough, that, you know, he's proud of his son and the work that he's put in. He's gotten some offers, gotten some looks from different schools. 
It all started at Christmas last year. Mac School's looking at them. As the Fighting Highlanders will kick it away. So it will be Cannon Mac back deep first. Isaiah Hicks and Zach Welsh back. And a very short kick from Baldwin that is dropped by Cannon Mack in. A fight for it at the bottom of the pile. Devin Taylor almost had it for Baldwin right at the 37. But Cannon Mack very lucky to fall on it. Yeah, it was Gino Calgaro who finally bounced on it. But for Baldwin, there was two players that just missed the ball after it was uh, in and out of the hands of one of the Big Mac players. And that's what we are talking about early with the big – with take your chances right there. We saw it last year a few times. Uh, onside kick to start the game, trying to catch the opponent off guard. Yeah, they give Cannon Mac a little better field position, but why not try it early and, and put the offense on the field in the Can in Cannon Mac territory? So a quick pass out to the near side on the reception, but a good tackle made defensively for the Fighting Highlanders. That's Andrew Sharp up to make the stop on Zach Welsh, the running back. And it goes for a big loss on the play of four yards. So ball went offensively. We'll take the field after this drive. And a lot of the guys that play on the offensive side also play on the defensive side, including Andrew Sharp, the leading running back. Hand off on second down. Lots of running room for Welsh. Welsh is still going. Pass midfield. Tons of room. 40, 30. Welsh down the sideline. 20, trying to cut it back inside. Andrew Sharp is the one that forced him out of bounds, but not after a huge game on second down and 14. Yeah, and that's the thing. They they know with the new freshman quarterback that Jansma may not have the the – the trust yet in the coaching staff to maybe throw it all over the field. But when they, he has a run game that he's able to complement with the passing game like that, it's going to make it much easier for this quarterback to transition into tonight. Walsh carries the ball inside the red zone of the 19. He gets the handoff once again, running up the middle. Now running room, bounce get outside, and not able to escape out of the tackle made by John Kozar up from the secondary. So some of the guys to look out for, Jaden Baxter, Tyler Armstead, wide receivers for Cannon Mack. Welsh, obviously, at running back is one of the top players. Caden Singleton, one of the captains, keep an eye out for him at tight end. Also plays on the lacrosse team and runs track and field. Jansma lines up in the pistol formation with Welsh the back. Second down and six to hand it off. Welsh, not much running room once again. Marco Del Rosario on the tackle for Baldwin, 26. So banged up a little bit this year. Able to get in there on the stop and force third down. Goes to the loss of one after the tackle for loss. So now we get a chance for Ty Jansma. See how he can spin it. The freshman lines up with Welsh to back, standing to his right. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Tight end, right side of the formation as well. Jansma rolls out. Near side of the field, pass is ruled incomplete right at the near sideline and the incompletion now sets up fourth down yeah and i mean that's a that's a great way to try to get jansma more time as we saw in the replay they roll him out try to move the pocket and they put one of the wide receivers on the, coming back on the near sideline just floats that one a little bit too far to his receivers left and drags him out of bounds with the throw so the field goal team is on zach bards the junior out to kick it away from 34 yards out, the kick is up and good. As Canamac opening possession gets on the board with 10.02 to go in the first quarter of play. Cannon McMillan leads it 3 to nothing here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Trump Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services, including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. Back here at Cannon Mac, Big Macs were able to take advantage of the short kick by Baldwin, but it almost was a lot worse for the Big Macs as the Fighting Highlanders were able to force a muff. Devin Taylor not able to fall on it for Baldwin. Cannon Mack able to corral it, set up shop. Long run from Welsh to set up the 30-plus yard field goal. Taylor and Dutine back deep for Baldwin. As the kickoff bounces and goes out of bounds. So opportune field position for Baldwin to begin... At its own 35. 
Under the direction of Nico McCurak, still looking for win number one as a starting quarterback in high school football, the sophomore 5'9", 170. With Andrew Sharp in the backfield, 91 rushes on the year. For over 650 yards, has scored 11 touchdowns as well. Devin Taylor, Keith Minson, John Kozar will also factor in in the backfield. And keep an eye on Evan Good at wide receiver. Noah Sakani as well, Jaden Dutine. Might see Nico Mazzell as well. DeLon Brown, Baldwin has tried to factor him in as well, number eight. Also, Landon France, tight end, lines up as a wide receiver on the far side of the formation. Shotgun for McCurak with Sharp the back, standing to his right. Two receivers line up each side. Ricoli goes in motion, a couple of different shifts with the tight ends. Now coming into the formation. Putting their hands into the turf. Dutine also in motion. A handoff to Sharp. Sharp tries to bounce it after finding no room up the middle. Just nothing there. Great tackle made by Gino Calgaro. It goes for a loss of two. They really need to find a way to get this run game going. It's been a little bit suffocated, especially in the first half these past couple of games. They need to find a way to get Sharp moving in the right direction, and it will only help McCurek whenever they have to go and air out the ball. Second down and 11 at the 34-yard line. Osakani goes in motion. And off to Sharp. Nothing there again. Sharp, though, still going. Lost the football. Trying to make something out of this play, but a huge loss. Ball still out, but Sharp was down. And a lot going on there as Zion Howard made the tackle. But Sharp still tried to fight for yardage, but ended up losing more than he could have gained. We take another look on the replay, and Sharp up the middle was able to keep his feet, did not go down, but then lost the football, and it moved his forward progress back a ton. But the ball, when it came out, down by contact. Yeah, and something that Sharp does so well hurt him in that scenario. He's able to break tackles, not just the first, but the second. He does it right there, but unable to hold onto the ball, and that doesn't that then allows him that doesn't allow him to turn up field like he normally can. Ball to near side, hash towards us. McCurak in the shotgun through receiver's far side. Lost the football, now throws it. Pass caught by Good. Good though, trying to make something out of nothing. Is able to get back close to the line of scrimmage on what was third and twenty-one. Another big loss for Baldwin. Now being forced to punt, going three and out. Yeah, McCurick, good good awareness. I mean, the, the play's designed to go out there towards uh, Good anyways, but he's able to pick, quickly pick up the bad snap, throw out to Good, and Canemac, though, instead of sucking into the ball that was on the turf, stayed disciplined, stayed on the guys on the outside, and Good just had nowhere to go. So McCurick, the quarterback, also the punter for the Fighting Highlanders. Takes a couple of steps back, gets the punt away. And it goes out of bounds right at the 47-yard line. So it brings back out the Canamac offense. Ty Jansma, who threw one pass. It was incomplete on that last drive. A great field position that actually will begin at the 45 of Baldwin. After the long rush by Welsh to set it up inside the red zone, Canamac kicked the field goal. That's where we're at right now. Three to nothing with 7.41 to go. Here in the first quarter of play on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network, Austin Bechtel, Tyler Zeman alongside here from Canamac. Pistol formation for Jansma. He hands it off. Ton of running room for Welsh. Welsh still going past the chains and is taken out of bounds by a plethora of Baldwin defenders past the 35 and out of bounds near the 32 for a first down. Yeah, and for a guy coming into this game at almost 700 yards rushing, on the season so far. He's someone that they will definitely look to get going here early, and he's answered that call. 668 overall and over 109 rushes. Yeah, he's three three games so far with over 100 yards as well, so. And off to Welsh again. This time, Baldwin suffocates him at the 40-yard line. Huge loss of seven. Vince Bracoli was there, as well as Andrew Sharp. Multitude of other Baldwin defenders helping to close in, including Evan Good and Vince Bracoli. That's a few times that Canamac has tried to run to the outside, and once again, Baldwin has just been able to get over there and cut off Welsh before he's able to turn up field. 
Sets up second down and 16. Trying to set up a screen, nothing there though. Jansma is pass incomplete. Was trying to connect with Jaden Baxter. But it just looked like a broken play after the screen was well sniffed out by Baldwin. Yeah, and we'll see it here again. Has plenty of time and just unable to connect on the pass through it actually behind his intended receiver in Baxter. And now it's a long third down for Cannon Mack. Third down and 16. Ball at the 40 yard line, needing to get inside Baldwin's 25 to convert. The freshman Jansma looking near side the whole way, and the pass is incomplete. Broken up by Keith Minson. One of the best players on this Baldwin defensive side of the ball at middle linebacker, leading tackler. Also the leader in the clubhouse in sacks and interceptions. If there's a category, Keith Minson probably leads in it. Yeah, and I mean, who else but Keith Minson to get the stop on third down for this Baldwin defense. And he almost had the pick on the near sideline as well. Saw Dana Brown Jr. jumping up and down as the ball hit the turf. That's a huge stop. They give Kanemak possession in their own territory, and they're able to force him on a three and out. Mason Williams, who's also the left guard on the punt, and a good one at that. High kick, bounces inside the five, and takes a good Kanemak bounce. Past the five and to the six. So a great punt by Williams, the senior captain, 6'1", 270, to help pin Baldwin back in not too great a field position. They'll mark it at the five. So with 6.20 to go, Kanemak leads it 3 to nothing. Second offensive possession for Baldwin after a very good field position. Beginning the last drive at the 35. This one, uh, 30 yards, a little bit closer to the end zone you're trying to reach. Yeah, I mean, really here, they, they're just looking to pick up the first down and try to, you know, if they can't convert on three downs, they're trying to look, trying to just push Kanemak as far back as they can after they, after they might have to punt. Pistol for McCurak. Fakes the hand off and takes it. Lots of open running. Romiko McCurak gets banged down at the 20-yard line. A great run and a great decision by the young quarterback to pull it and take it himself. Yeah, a little bit of option there in the backfield. He decides to tuck it and run, and this is something we haven't seen from McCurak. Something we've seen a lot from Kozar is his ability to carry the ball down the field from the quarterback position, and McCurak is able to make the right read and then has the hole to go on and pick up the first down on the very first play. Lines up with Sharp as well as Minson in the backfield. Looks like Kanemak might have jumped off sides. Running play up the middle to Minson with no flag on the play. Only a short pickup, about a yard or two. Brings up second down. Yeah, the defense has done their job so far here early in the game and now it's up to this offense to put together a drive and march down the field. Second down and eight. Ball at the 22 for McCurak. Similar type of formation. One receiver far side, one on the near side. This time the handoff goes to Sharp. Sharp not able to break off the first couple of tacklers there. Decent gain for Sharp to set up third down. Made his way to the 24, pickup of two. It'll be third down and six coming up. Yeah, two two runs back to back on first and second down with a guy like Sharp. You, I think, ideally want to pick up more there. But again, it, it makes it puts this ball on offense in a more favorable position. A third and six is a lot easier than some of the third downs they've had to convert on in the last couple of weeks. And this is a really good Cannon Mac team at tackling, wrapping up making the play and not preventing and preventing big plays as McCurak rolls out to the far side. Has Sharp that way with him. McCurak's pass is caught. First down ball when Evan Good on the reception at the 35. And it goes for an 11-yard passing play to move the chains. Yeah, and again, that's great from McCurak. Able to, on the run, deliver that ball into the chest of Good, who's able to make the reception his favorite target, as we talked about earlier in the broadcast. He's able to go to him on third down, and they're able to pick it up. Good, 13 catches, 247 yards entering today. Leading receiver in terms of catches and total yards for Baldwin, also with a touchdown to his name. This time looking for John Kozar, that's incomplete. And Tyler, that would have been John Kozar's first reception of the season if he was able to corral it. Came into today with none. 
starting quarterback for the first three games of the year has transitioned to a halfback wide receiver type role. Yeah, and, and he's a guy that I feel like they have really have been trying to implement more and more. He just hasn't really gotten that chance to, to shine yet outside of the quarterback position. He's a very good athlete. There's no doubt about it. He has the ability to go out there and play wide receiver to go and carry the ball out of the backfield, but just hasn't wasn't able to lead the offense at the quarterback position as they expected him to. McCurak hands it off. Lots of room for Sharp. Past the first tackler. Sharp spinning his way towards midfield. Another ball win first down and a pickup of 14 yards for Andrew Sharp as this offense begins to rumble down the field. Yeah, and I mean, not only is there a great hole at the line of scrimmage, but then downfield, a guy we have talked about just recently, John Kozar, able to put a block on the DB and allows Sharp to dive forward for a few yards at the end of the run. I, it's those things that doesn't necessarily get you on the stat sheet from Kozar, but some of those things that when you go back in the film room after Friday nights, you know, coaching staff will be very pleased to see him out there blocking as hard as he did, as hard as he is. He now comes off the field and was not able to play only after a couple plays against North Allegheny. He came out with an injury. Was out for the rest of that one as Sharp. This time tries to bounce it near side. Sharp still going, but ends up losing a yard. From midfield to back into Baldwin territory at the 49. Yeah, and I mean, again, it's just Sharp's playmaking ability just surrounded by Big Macs and ends up making two of them miss with just a little shimmy. And he's not able to fully dive back to the line of scrimmage, but is able to get out of a little bit of jam and potentially losing more yards than he did. Marco Fayetta on the tackle, a sophomore 5'9 middle linebacker, really talented player, 48 tackles on the year, an interception, five tackles for loss. Pistol formation for McCurak, has some time. Pass is incomplete, trying to convert on the pass to DeLon Brown. Also a very dangerous play, though, as Fayetta was there and a couple of others. Potentially, if the ball was thrown a little bit more errantly, it could have been an interception. Yeah, and one of those... Uh, Brown is one of those guys where they've also tried to implement him more and more into the offense. We saw him, he had a target last week, uh, was unable to make the catch, and then McCurick was just throw that one too far ahead of Brown. But somebody that I think if they can find the right way to use Brown, he could be another weapon for this offense. Third and 11, McCurick rolls out far side, pressure collapses in on him, and he goes down. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. But Calgaro's there once again, the captain at linebacker. That's his fifth and a half sack on the season as he brings down McCurak. Baldwin now sets up McCurak in the shotgun, looking to take a couple steps back and potentially punt this one away on what is third down and 11. McCurak now takes a couple more steps to the 41. Pooches it away. Not a good kick. High, but not very deep. Does take a ball when bouncing is. Tried to be corralled by Cannon Mack, but Baldwin looks to have fallen on it at the 20-yard line. Baldwin's bench signaling that's the case. The sideline going ballistic, and it will be Baldwin football at the 20. Yeah, and it, it was a called fair catch. It bounced, and it was going to be a favorable bounce for Baldwin, and instead of letting it go, Evan Morris tried to field the ball, and he just couldn't, and... Kozar, the first one on the scene to go and pick it up for the Fighting Islanders. Andrew Sharp and the whole special teams unit, very excited. As it was Morris not able to corral it, there is a player down on the field for Cannon Mack. And as he is attended to, we'll take a short break here on the Fighting Islanders Sports Network. Buy one window, get a free unicorn. Just kidding. Are you tired of dishonest offers? I'm Brian Murphy, owner of Easy Home Exteriors, and we take your home seriously. If you need windows, roofing, siding, or doors, we'll give you fair, honest pricing the first time, every time. No pressure, no gimmicks. We'll give you a free estimate. You don't even need to be home. Call 412-678-7008. That's 412-678-7008. If you're lucky, we'll throw in a unicorn. <laughs> So Tyler, it looked like John Kozar was the one that came away with the ball at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, it looked like he was the one who had uh, originally jumped on it as they were running back towards the sideline. He w he was the guy with the ball in his hands, and obviously we didn't have the coach interview before the game, but I think that one deserves a sticker. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, touch on that in a bit. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll tell you what head coach Andrew Brown Jr. was able to tell us. So beforehand, Andrew Sharp might have lost the football there too. And that is the case. Andrew Sharp gives it right back. 
Morris, I think, was the one that forced it out and recovered as Cannon Mack, one play later, gets the ball right back. No, it was actually uh, Tyler Armstead who came in from the right side of Sharp. He punched it out, and Cannon Mack able to pick up the ball. And I think it was Morris on the recovery. And void the, the fumble on special teams. So after Cannon Mack fumbled, Baldwin fumbled, turnovers on back-to-back -back plays. So it's a wash, like nothing happened. The Canamac offense out there at the 19-yard line. Head up up the middle. Baldwin expecting run, that being the case. And not much there. Bring up second down and long. And that's exactly the case. They go back to Welsh on first down. And How about Landon France, the freshman in there, helping to make that tackle right at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, just the hole clogged up so early for Welsh, and Baldwin was able to attack him and Wrap him up at the line of scrimmage. Jansman in the pistol. Hands it off. Welsh running far side. Lots of running room. Welsh cuts it back inside. Welsh still going to the 30-yard line. Gets stomped by John Kozar right at the sticks. Maybe a yard past it. He's able to pick up 11 for Welsh in a first down. Yeah, and this is what you can't have happen if you're Baldwin. You can't let Welsh get out of there and run upfield because we've seen how explosive he was on the very first drive of the game. They have to find a way to contain him early on around the line of scrimmage and not let him use that explosive speed down the field. Jansman now goes under center. They hand it off. Running room near side and collapsing in Keith Minson once again. Not much going on the handoff to Troy Simpson. Stimson, a freshman at 5'9", 165, 16 carries on the air. That is 17th. Brings up second down. Yeah, Baldwin's been ready for these runs to the outside here early on. There's a few that have gone through, but, I mean, that's another one where they run the ball towards the near sideline, and Baldwin's able to just get over there and stop the running back from going upfield. 27 seconds still to go in the quarter. Handoff up the middle. Lots of running room. Stimson spins his way for a first down at the 40. Able to pick up 12 for a Big Mac first down. Yeah, and this one just goes straight up the middle. Offensive line does exactly what they need to, and Stimson's able to turn on the Jets as he crosses over the line of scrimmage and pick up the first. Ten seconds left in the quarter. See if Cannon Mack elects to run a play in a 3 to nothing game in favor of Cannon Mack. Jansman now goes under center. Two seconds and one. No play as the clock expires. On the first quarter of play, let's go to the second. Three to nothing. The Cannon McMillan Big Max lead Baldwin at the end of 12 minutes. 12 more on the clock in this first half of play right here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle? Dean Honda is one of the largest volume dealerships in the Pittsburgh area, offering sales, service, and parts. Our service center offers competitive pricing and same-day service. If you're looking to sell your vehicle, stop by Dean Honda and leave with a check in hand. Visit us on Route 51 in Pleasant Hills or at DeanHonda.com. We raised $5,000! When you purchase life insurance and annuity products from GBU Life, you also have more opportunities to give back to your community. GBU matches donations you make up to $1,000 per member. I have GBU Life Insurance! Oh, wow. I have a GBU youth policy. Whoa. We've, We've got, got GBU, GBU annuities. Hey. Our $5,000 just turned into $10,000. That's, That's a lot, lot of big checks. checks. Find out more at GBU.org. Back here to begin the second quarter of play from Canamac. Three to nothing, the Big Macs lead it. We change opposite ends of the field. Canamac now going right to left as we see it. After a 34-yard field goal, got the Big Macs on the board. Handoff up the middle, lots of running room for Welsh. Welsh still going, past midfield. Welsh into Baldwin territory, and the pile pushes forward after a couple of Baldwin defenders collapsed in on him, including Keith Minson. So the 45, great gain on the play of about 15. Yeah, and this run game right now for Kenny Mack is starting to pick up a little bit more. You saw Welsh go out for a few plays. It was continued, and... It's coming back, though, with a holding penalty. So, 
Maybe that's the reason why Welsh had so much running room that was sprung there. Now put the ball at the 35, so big difference in field position. Canamac 35, where it would have been Canamac ball at the Baldwin 45. Taylor and Coz are the two deep safeties. The handoff goes to Welsh. Welsh again with good running room, bounces it far side. And a good tackle made by Kozar up from the secondary to make the stop right before the initial line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 11. Yeah, Kozar just got the ankles of Welsh right there as he tried to sidestep around Kozar. If he had completed the move and gone around the senior, it would have been a foot race down the sideline. But Kozar luckily was able to come up and wrap up Welsh. Ball at the 40-yard line. Welsh. Remains the back, gets the carry again, bounces it far side, lots of running room this time again, and he is spun out of bounds, dragged just a little bit short of the sticks at midfield, but it appears that he might have been able to reach before going out of bounds the football to the sticks. No signal yet, but it looks like it will, yes, be third down. Yeah, and Baldwin's going to have to do a little bit of problem solving here. They cannot continue to allow this run game and Welsh to do this on them do this to them on back-to-back -back downs. Jansma under center, handed off to the fullback, and... Initial effort wasn't there, but the second chance at it, able to pick up a first down. That's Gino Calgardo, able to convert on third and short. And Calgaro, one of the senior leaders on this team, a guy who was a WPIL champion in wrestling over the winter season last year. I mean, he's a very big guy, very physical and strong, and I mean, when it's third in inches, why not give it to him to push his way forward for the first down? So Baldwin calls timeout. Overall for Welsh, we alluded to it a little bit earlier, 600-plus yards rushing. We'll talk about him in just a little bit when we come back here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. At Mmm -mm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mmm, mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. So as you take a look at the Baldwin helmets there, you can see on the left side of it, there's a good shot from Evan Goode. There's some stickers there that we'll get to right after this play. Handoff goes to Welsh. Welsh bounces it far side past the 40-35, picks up a first down. Stays in bounds right near the 40. So those stickers are symbolic of a couple of different things. And I said to... Dana Brown Jr., when we talked to him before the game, is it somewhat like what Ohio State does with the stickers on their helmets for the Buckeyes? And it's kind of something where you get more and more stickers based off of accomplishments, and they're also really team-based as well. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea. It's it's a very cool one. You, you know who the better players are in the season based off those helmets. Welsh breaks out the first two tackles. Land in France able to make the stop. Able to pick up. Around 14 yards on the play. Rather, four yards on the play as 17 makes the tackle for Baldwin. Land in France, a freshman at 6-2. Only came into today with a couple of tackles on the year. Welsh remains the back as Kanemak goes under center. Handed off his way. Welsh, nothing there. Sharp and Minson in on the tackle as it'll bring up third down and about six yards, maybe five after a pickup of around one yard. Yeah, and again, this Ken and Mack team a little bit bigger in size compared to what Baldwin will see from the start of the year to what they'll see at the end of the season, one of the bigger teams they'll face. And they've just been able to aggressively push this Baldwin defensive line backwards here on the last couple of plays letting Welsh have that space to run into. Welsh the back. Jansman in the pistol. Hands it off to him. Welsh, nothing there. Sharp was there on the initial pressure. Keith Minson also pushed him back. DeLon Brown there as well. No gain on the play. Sets up fourth down. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want on third down. You think maybe Canamax tries to throw it, air the ball out with the freshman, but instead they go back to Welsh and 
Baldwin was all ready for that one, able to get in there quick and wrap him up before he got back to the line of scrimmage. Keith Minson brought the ruckus defensively. Big shot on Welsh. Great tackle. Set up fourth down at the 25. Sharp showing pressure, brings it. Passes, incomplete, wide open man. He was not able to convert on the far side with Tyler Armstead, who was wide open, and Baldwin will take over. Yeah, and we just see it there at the end, a little bit of miscommunication between Kozar and the corner on the far sideline. The DB passed it off, and Armstead found himself wide open, just couldn't complete the catch. And a ball that just sailed on the freshman quarterback. Yeah, and, and that, that could be a big change in tides here for Baldwin. I mean, unable to get the stop on fourth down, get the offense back on the field. And after the they moved the ball pretty well on the last offensive drive, I mean, they, they can try to put together another one here. Drives begins at the 25. McKirak hands it off to Sharp. Sharp past the first initial wave, making his way to the 33. A good pickup there. Not six yards. Yeah, and again, if this offense is going to continue to move the ball with success, it's going to start with Sharp and what they're able to do with the run game, which what we've seen all season and what they did very well last season as well offensively. As they bring on another weapon here in Kozar. But Sharp is, Sharp is going to need to be the one that they rely on and lean on here if the passing game starts to not have as much success as they've been able to have early on. So Kozar... And Noah Sicani line up on the near side. Handoff goes to Sharp. Sharp able to pick up the first down. Maneuvers his way to the 40-yard line in a pickup of seven on second down to move the chains again. Yeah, two runs, and it's a new set of downs for Baldwin. That's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you want to get out of these run plays through Andrew Sharp. And it's good to say... Move the chains again. It hasn't been on this drive, but overall for Baldwin, something that's been a struggle in games, especially in the first half, moving the football consistently, getting good drives. It's good to see so far. Sharp comes off the field. Ball at the 40. Handoff goes to Minson, but met by a wall of defenders right at the line of scrimmage. It goes for no gain. As we are now under seven minutes remaining in the first half. Yeah, and I mean, if you're Baldwin, you got to be happy with the score here, I mean, I mean it's, it's 3 nothing. Definitely. I mean, this, is, this is the best case scenario for the Highlanders. They put together a drive here and answer with points of their own. I mean, this is this is a wide open ball game going into half, which is something we haven't really been able to say all season. Well, still a lot of time still in the half with six yeah. and a half to go. But if you're Baldwin, one thing that you want to try to do that you haven't done yet, if it happens again, capitalize off turnovers. There's already been two from Cannon Mack. As McCurack in the pistol formation lines up with the receiver near side, one on the far side, three men in the backfield. McCurack with time, near side passes, incomplete, looking for Dutine. Baldwin looking for a flag, and there it is on the slant route to Dutine. Looks like Calgaro was the one in coverage that's going to be guilty of the flag. Yeah, it looked like Howard was over there too, possibly. Yeah, it, Howard, yeah, it was Howard, Howard went up with the wide receiver, and it looks like the penalty is going to go against him. Yeah, good eyes, Tyler. It was Howard, the corner, senior, 5'10", 180, with 20 tackles on the year, looking for his first interception. And it moves the ball into Canamac territory at the 40. 6.17 to go here in this second quarter of play. 3-0 Canamac. McCurack in the pistol. Hands it off to, fakes the hand off to Minson. Lots of running room for McCurack. McCurack first down, still going to the 30. Nico McCurak, tuck and run, second time we've seen it today, and it picks up 14 yards. Yeah, this time it's a little triple option action. Doesn't decide to go to uh, Minson. He had Sharp on the pitch, but when he has the hole like that to run through, McCurak is going to tuck it himself. Looked like old Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets offense there on the triple option. So it moves the ball to the 30. Great gain for McCurak, who lines up in the shotgun. Roll to the near side, Sharp there to help block. McCurak's pass is incomplete. Was trying to connect with Dutine, but just bounced it to him at the 20. Brings up second down. Yeah, on the run, again, we've seen this a lot, and we've seen McCurick make the throws, but on the run, the ball just doesn't have enough power behind it to get to Dutine. 
He did. He did do a good job trying to get low and scoop that off the turf. How about this, Tyler? They just showed our replay on the on the scoreboard here. On that goal. Very cool. On the near side. So it sets up second down and ten. I caught that out of the corner of my eye. It was pretty cool to see. McCurack shotgun with Sharp the back. Three receivers near side. Sharp gets the handoff, but three men were in the backfield right away. Great play. TJ Sabatucci, the defensive end, a sophomore, 6'2", 230, was not fooled whatsoever. Yeah, and this is something that Cannon Mack has done well is quieting Sharp. I mean, Sharp has had his, his carries. I mean, there's no question about that, but they've done well when he's tried to get outside the numbers and get down the sideline. They've just been over there and have been able to stop him before he's able to just launch himself out of the backfield. Sabatucci sabotaged that play to set up third down and 16. McCurak takes the handoff. Lots of pressure. Try to set up screen for Sharp. Deflected and incomplete. A couple of different guys were there for Cannon Mack defensively to help force that incompletion, including Caden Singleton on the coverage of Sharp. Yeah, and I mean, this is a, a long way to go, but you're kind of in on awkward territory. Too far for a field goal, but you're uh, maybe a little too close to punt. There was a flag down on the play. And the ball was tipped, so there is no legal man downfield penalty. That's what it would have been called. So now fourth down and 16, Tyler. You're at the 36. I mean, I mean you have to get to the 20. Do, so. do you punt it away here? I mean, this far inside Canamac territory? I mean, I, I again, you're kind of in no man's land, but you're fourth a little too far to convert. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be tough. See what Baldwin might have in the bag of tricks. So 20 seconds on the play clock. McCurak now empty backfield. Might just take a couple of steps and punt it away. Gives the signal and now takes a couple steps to the 44 and does boot it. A lot higher of a kick as it bounces and is recovered by Baldwin inside the 10. So trying to play the field position battle and what is a close game 3 nothing, And McCurak's kick, one of the better ones that we've seen so far tonight. Yeah, and you've been able to slow down this Canamac offense to this point. And, you know, you were talking about ways that ways to keep Baldwin in this game. They have to capitalize off the turnovers. They also need to find a way to keep managing the time of possession. It's something we haven't seen their offense do. If they're not just going to have success here in the first half, but more of sustained success throughout the second half, they're going to have to find a way to control the ball offensively, take time off the clock, have some long gruesome drives for Cannon Mac to have to defend defensively and I mean at, at the end of it you want to find a way to come away with points pistol formation for Cannon Mac Jansma looks to throw far side of the field pass is caught reception made inside the 10 big hit made by Dutine on Isaiah Hicks the senior at 6 one 180 makes his second catch of the year big stop made by Baldwin defensively after a short pickup yeah Dutine with the wrap up and it looked like yeah, Minson, who came in at the end to it was Minson, officially yeah. take the ball carrier down to the ground. I don't know. It feels like, to me, a little bit, Austin, that this Baldwin team has kind of come out with a, a little bit more energy. I feel like this is a level of, of play we haven't really seen from the Highlanders so far this season. Well, there's been a lot of fire. And a timeout taken by the Cannon McMillan Big Max. 4.16 to go. Here in the second quarter of play, we got a ball game. 3 nothing, Cannon Mac here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. If you need insurance, you need an agency that's sharp. The Sharp Insurance Agency is an independent agency and distinguish themselves by providing face-to-face -face customer service and reviewing coverage to provide the best possible value for their clients. Hi, I'm Mike Sharp. Lean on my years of experience in the Pittsburgh area to find you the best insurance coverage because when insurance companies compete, you win. The Sharp Insurance Agency. Contact us today to have your personal or business insurance professionally reviewed. Four sixteen to go, second down and eight coming up. And Tyler, we were talking a little bit during the commercial break that this is partially a different game because Mikey Evans, the senior 6'2", captain, is not in there at quarterback. Dynamic passer of the football, 64 for 113 coming into today. Dealing with a knee injury, got hurt in the central game. 600-plus passing yards, 56% completion rate. As the ball is out, still out, 
Baldwin trying to fall on it and trying to get it into the end zone as it was not able to be recovered by Jansma. And Baldwin recovers it at the one yard line. Great field position for the Fighting Highlanders as, wow, we were just about to say it. No Mikey Evans, Jansma, the freshman, coughs it up. Yeah, and, and Jansma, it looked like just a routine recovery as he went to the ground to fall on it. And all of a sudden, that ball just rolled out from under him. Minson, who, who else? Who else? Keith Minson, first one on the scene to recover that one. And just like that, you put this offense on the field, they have four shots to move the ball three feet. And everybody in the building should know what's happening here. You hand the ball off to Andrew Sharp and let him get two yards. Ball one lines up. And the pistol now bringing Minson into the game. Yeah, they were one man short. Yeah, I was counting to see if it was <laughs> 11 or maybe 12 they were putting out on the field. So, McCurak hands it off. Sharp into the end zone. For the Baldwin touchdown. There is a flag, though, lying at the three-yard line. Or, excuse me, seven-yard line. And it's coming back. Yeah, I mean, some you knew something was bound to go wrong there whenever they only had 10 men come out in the original huddle. Yeah, I'm glad you saw it. I did not see the flag originally. And Baldwin, the sideline clearly did not either with the celebration that ensued. So Tyler, the illegal formation, backs the ball up from the 2 to the 7. And it could, it still is first down, first mm -hmm. and goal. But it somewhat does change the play call potentially here. Yeah, I mean, but but you think about who you have in that backfield with not with how McCurk's been running the ball, Sharp, and then Minson. I mean, you have to trust one of those three or the three of them combined to get you a total of seven yards to punch this one in. And Baldwin wants to talk about it a little bit more. Calls timeout. So 4 6 to go, first and goal coming up from the seven. Baldwin looking to try to take the lead at Cannon Mac. Buy one window, get a free unicorn. Just kidding. Are you tired of dishonest offers? I'm Brian Murphy, owner of Easy Home Exteriors, and we take your home seriously. If you need windows, roofing, siding, or doors, we'll give you fair, honest pricing the first time, every time. No pressure, no gimmicks. We'll give you a free estimate. You don't even need to be home. Call 412-678-7008. That's 412-678-7008. If you're lucky, we'll throw in a unicorn. <laughs> First and goal coming up. Baldwin now with one timeout remaining. And the Fighting Highlanders looking to try to punch it into the end zone. Tyler, we've highlighted the problems this team has had in scoring. And what did we also say earlier? There were two turnovers by Kinemac. Baldwin did not convert on any of them. Mm -hmm. You have to. It's a must, an absolute must convert, score, yeah. not a field goal, a touchdown. Yeah, and I think right now for this for this offense, it's a little bit of baby steps. Really tough first half the past couple of games. Unable to pick up first downs. You're able to pick up first downs. Now it's just putting the cherry on top. You got to complete these drives with points. Here we go. McCurak hands it off to Sharp. Sharp near side. Sharp towards the goal line diving and scoring. Touchdown. Andrew Sharp from seven yards out as the Fighting Highlanders take the lead. And that's exactly what, what I mean by... The penalty obviously hurts them yardage-wise, but when you have a guy like that and Andrew Sharp, you got to you gotta trust the fact that you give him three plays to pick up seven yards. He has to be able to do it. He does it on the first one, and Baldwin, like you said, now back up in the lead, and, and we'll see how Cannon Mack responds after the, the fumble on the last drive. It's been the Andrew Sharp show offensively for Baldwin this year. The extra point is up. And good. Andrew Sharp finds the end zone for the 12th time this year. Thanks to our guy Aaron running the stats, helping us to provide that number. Fighting Hounders take the lead with four minutes to go here in the first half from Cannon McMillan on the Fighting Hounders Sports Network. I love the things I build and the people I build them with. But I got plans that go beyond buildings. I moved some of my savings into a GBU Asset Guard annuity so I can retire when something unexpectedly great happens. You made the right call. You chose a GBU Asset Guard annuity, a multi-year guaranteed annuity which works to grow your funds at a locked-in interest rate for a term of two to five years. Two to five. My son's got that sweetheart football scholarship. Every game, I'll be there, thanks to some help from GBU Life. 
So Baldwin will kick it away, and Tyler, the first time that Baldwin kicked it off was the opening kickoff of the game. Canamac muffed it, and it started of began this theme trend of turnovers in this game. Four total between each side. Four total fumbles. As this one is kicked a little bit deeper by Baldwin, close to going out of bounds. It bounces, it will stay in bounds. Big hit delivered by Evan Good on special teams. And Canamac. Tyler really has been sloppy in this second quarter. Yeah, I mean, this time it's Braden Collins, who I think was expecting the ball to bounce out of bounds, but you could hear the, the yelling from the coaching staff up here in the press box, uh, yelling at him to go and pick up the ball because, I mean, right behind him was Evan Good, and if that ball stays live, I mean, you don't want Baldwin picking it up that deep in your own territory. Uh, Evan Good is right there to try to make the recovery. So the problem for Cannon Mac offensively, really, Jansma, the quarterback, just fumbled to set up the Baldwin touchdown just a couple of minutes ago. This has been a run-heavy attack from Cannon Mac and back to the ground game. Welsh, nothing there as Taylor's there to help make the tackle. Devin Taylor, this is really a breakout game for him defensively. He's been fantastic on the edge. Yeah, he's a guy that we've said his name a few times this season, but I mean, he's been really big here early on and just able to push his offensive lineman back and able to reach out and grab the ball carry as he comes by. Yeah, he looped around from the near side of the formation. Has been playing safety tonight, but has also been a big factor downfield. Pass is towards the far side of the field, incomplete. I was trying to connect with Braden Maddo. And the incompletion to Maddo sets up Third down and long, and now you're talking about potentially Baldwin getting the ball back at the end of the quarter. Yeah, I mean, just like that, it's third down after the, the run goes nowhere on first down and the incomplete pass on second down. I mean, this is an offense where you're already out your starting quarterback. You have really nowhere else to turn at the quarterback position. And Zion Howard, your leading receiver for Canamac, only playing defensively today as a club on his hand. Pass over the middle is caught. Gain past the 35-yard line to Singleton. Late flag at the end of it. Two flags in the backfield. A lot of pushing and shoving. Baldwin signaling it's on Cannon Mack. Yeah, there was a little bit of jawing going on in the backfield, but who else when you need to pick up the first down? You go to Singleton, and he's able to just make the catch and bring it in. Singleton, the Delaware commit, ninth catch of the year. See what the flags are. It was after the play. Singleton also has the record for the most blocked kicks in a season in Canamac history. So Jaden Bolts for Cannon Mack, guilty of the penalty. Yeah, and Divin for the Fighting Islanders. Andre Divin, the sophomore, six foot two seventy five on the defensive line. I mean that that I mean. Look, you obviously don't want that the drawing back and forth, you know, if you're the coaching staff, but the well, it, fact of the matter is it, it offsets and yes. they have to replay the down. Replay the down. I mean, that's the big part if you're the Fighting Highlanders. As I guess it apparently was not so much after the play. So it's third down and 10 for Jansma. Has plenty of time. Jansma, middle of the field, pass is broken up. Incomplete. Keith Vinson was there. Not able to convert on the pass to set up fourth down in the punting unit coming on. Yeah, and Morris just comes short on a crossing route, and Minson, although he's a linebacker, I mean, he can just line up against anybody. Wide receiver, tight end, running back, doesn't matter. He does it here again, able to put his arm out in front of Morris and poke that one out. And Morris is not able to get good position on Minson to try to box him out and even make a play. Would have been short of the sticks. So Mason Williams, the punter, is on. Williams able to get it away. Jaden Dutine forced the pressure, and it hits off a of Taylor, but is fielded by Baldwin. John Kozar was right there in a great position. It bounced off of Taylor's shoulder. Devin Taylor back returning punt, something a little bit new that we've seen from Baldwin. He was trying to back away from it, yeah. and in a swarm of three Canamac defenders, John Kozar dove on top of the football. Yeah, it looked like he was in between minds rather than go and field the ball with, Cannon, with the Big Macs kind of hurling down on him, and then at the last moment he tried to back away, but it was just too late. Luckily, Kozar was there. But on the other end, Dutine 
getting right into the backfield. He almost was a comes up with the block punt. Split second away from it. Three coaches right now talking to Devin Taylor on the near side towards us, giving him a pat on the helmet. Dana Brown Jr. trying to give him a little bit of encouragement as well as a little bit of words of wisdom on what to do in the next occasion. Empty backfield as Noah Sikani goes in motion towards the far side. McKirak, design quarterback run, lots of running room, gets a block from Good. McKirak, lots of room. Jaden Dutee now blocking past the 30. McKirak, 25, and is upended inside the 25-yard line. Nico McKirak in the Canamac territory on a huge gain on the quarterback keeper. Yeah, and this ball on offense, where has this been the last couple of weeks? They have just found a new a new level, a new gear. New life. And McKirak is... is I mean, the one leading them forward in it, and another great run from him, uh, his third carry of the game, and that one just puts him even deeper into Canamac territory. Howard finally brought him down at the 21, just outside the red zone. Still plenty of time, 217 and counting. Baldwin with one timeout remaining in the half. Empty backfield for McCurek. Gozar lined up near side, clapping as Canamac takes a timeout. Did not like... What they saw from Baldwin lining up offensively. And let's take a break. 7-3, to three, Baldwin leads it. Looking to try to score again before the end of the half. And Baldwin will get the ball to begin the second half of play here on the Fighting Outer Sports Network. GBU Secure Life Insurance Policies help to provide for the ones you love after you're gone. But what happens when life gets challenging while you're here? GBU Life's permanent life insurance builds cash value that you can borrow against. Optional riders cover you in case of certain illnesses, allow you to increase your coverage without additional medical exams, and provide coverage for your whole family on one policy. And GBU's community focus means you have a chance to make a lifelong difference in your community. Visit GBU.org. Tyler, we talked about it a lot, but blocking today, mm -hmm. man, it's been, it's been great for Baldwin, and it has sparked what could be 10 to 15-yard runs into the McCurack 20-plus, 30-plus yard yeah. run to set up first down at the 21. Yeah, I mean, just right now for Baldwin, it looks like they just have a greater want than Canamac. They just have have this this kind of feeling to go out, and they, they want it more than the Big Macs. And, again, it starts with those little things of blocking on the outside for from Kozar in the first quarter and then from uh, Dutine here on the last uh, McCurick run. It's just been allowing this run game to kind of get more life. Two seconds on the play clock. Baldwin gets the playoff. McCurak looking. Slant route. Good. Passes broken up. Incomplete. Ball popped up into the air. Howard was there defensively, but could have been a lot worse. Howard was there to help break it up, but looked like it just bounced off of Good as well. Yeah, and then you had uh, Calguero and Morris, who were both in the vicinity and just couldn't come up with the ball on the on the tip drill. As Evan Good is now hobbling off to the sideline, Marco Del Rosario was being looked at earlier by the training staff. So, Kozar, Sakani, Minson, Dutine, Sharp, the eligibles of Nakurak in the shotgun. Sharp the back. They hand it off Sharp's way, running near side. Sharp bounces it back inside. Sharp still going. Sharp 15, 10. Sharp still on his feet, stays in bounds, now goes out of bounds near the five. Able to pick up a first down. Andrew Sharp, tough physical run and would not go down. Yep, and, and that's a run right there where that'll teach the Big Macs. You can't just tackle with one. It's going to take two, three of you sometimes to bring him down. And three Big Macs diving in at the end of the play to just make sure that, that Sharp is physically down on the ground. How Garo tried, Fayetta tried. So many guys defensively for Canamac tried to bring him down, and it really took the boundary for Andrew Sharp to be pushed out at the seven. McCurack in the pistol. Minson standing to his right. Sharp behind him. 157 on the clock. One second on the play clock. Baldwin's going to have to use a timeout here. As the offense was just not quick enough there to get the playoff. Final timeout of the half for Baldwin with 157 remaining in the half. Looking to try to pad the lead. Currently up 7-3. We want to thank our sponsors for being a part of this 2023 broadcasting season here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network, including GBU Life, the Sharp Insurance Agency. So we saw Andrew Sharp, Mike Sharp's son, able to get into the end zone, the Sharp Insurance Agency, as well as Dean Honda, Easy Home Exteriors, mm -mm, Pizza Baldwin, providing today's pregame meal for all home games. 
a lot of pregame meals for home games, thanks to mm -mm Pizza Baldwin, as well as Trout Plumbing as well here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network, our official sponsors here in the 2023 WPIL season for the Fighting Highlanders. Fourth year of Baldwin football coverage here on the network. Austin Bechtel, Tyler Zeman alongside with you today. First down and goal at the seven-yard line. Well, Tyler, the last touchdown was scored from seven yards out. I wonder if the play call might just be the same. Give the ball to Andrew Sharp and let him work. Minson also in the backfield to the right of McCurak. Handoff goes to Sharp. Sharp bounces off the first tackle, not able to do so off the second. Does push his way forward, though, near the five. Seems he just got to the six as Calgaro made the stop. Yeah, I was able to pick up a few yards there, and they only need five or six more as there's a Big Mac down on the field. But, I mean, if, if you're Baldwin, it's four down territory, and, you know, you're looking for six on this drive. Injured player down for Cannon Mac, training staff out to look at him. We'll tell you who that injured player is in a moment here on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Sure, I'll be there at 5 a.m. <laughs> I can binge one more episode. Let's face it, you don't always set yourself up for success. Five more minutes. Where are my work shoes? But GBU Life makes it easy with life insurance and annuity products to help secure your future so you have the freedom to do more of what you love. Congratulations! You did it. Retiring early must be nice. What are you going to do first? I think I'll sleep in. Secure your future today. Visit GBU.org. 147 left as Evan Goode was being attended to and was taped up on the Baldwin sideline. There was also a player down for Cannon Mack that is still being attended to. And, you know, Tyler, you really hate to see someone being looked at for this much of an extended period of time. Hope he's okay. We're going to try to spot the number here. I haven't been able to do so yet. So it will be second down and goal at the seven yard line for Baldwin upcoming. Head coach Mike Evans is out there as well. We talked about Mikey Evans a little bit. The quarterback that is out today. He actually holds the individual completion percentage record in a game at Cannon Mac. Two years ago against Baldwin. Right here at Cannon Mac. 89%. He was 8 of 9 on the day. As the injured man is being helped off the field. That is, that is Logan Logston, the sophomore linebacker who was down on the play and needs help getting off the field. Hope he's okay. One of the best players on this defensive side of the football for Cannon Mack. Homecoming today for Cannon McMillan here at Cannon Mack High School. Second down in goal for the Fighting Highlanders. Looking to try to capitalize off the big run from Nico McCurak earlier in the drive. DeLon Brown also enters the backfield, standing to the right of McCurak. Sharp behind McCurak in the pistol. McCurak rolling near side. Flag is thrown. McCurak taken down. Calgaro. Gino Calgaro collapsed in on him for the sack. Flew in there, shot out of a cannon to push Baldwin back. Yeah, and, and there's a few flags that came out in the Baldwin one backfield the, as, as well. One in the secondary, too. So we'll see where it's at, but... Interesting play call there on second down inside the ten yard line. Again, they come out looking in looking in like a triple option set, and they end up having McCurk throw the ball, and they lose a few yards as well yeah, on the play. I don't know about you, I'm a little bit surprised. Not just give it to Andrew Sharp. I mean, everybody kind of thinks that that would be the play. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the understanding of why not try to catch him off guard. Baldwin tried a slant route from the far side of the field. Receiver on the left side of the formation, a quick slant. 
So now after the four-yard loss, it's third and goal at the 11. Empty backfield for McCurak. Sends Keith Minson in motion. Two receivers line up on the far side. Minson joins him. McCurak, design quarterback, run nowhere to go. Sniffed out right away by Cannon Mack. Once again, Cal Garrow there for the stop. Helping out Singleton as well to make the play. Yeah, and I think when you look back at the drive, I think the, the big question is the play call there on second down. You know, with the way that they've been running the ball with Sharp, you know, maybe it's too obvious, but how they've been mixing it up with the option and the triple option over the last couple of drives, maybe you just try to disguise it somehow through that, but instead they, they end up going backwards on second and third down. So here's Achara on to attempt the field goal, and a timeout taken by Cannon Mack. Last time out of the half. Cannon Mack trying to ice the kicker here with 23 seconds remaining in the half. It's 7-3 Baldwin looking to try to pad this lead, try to make it a 7-point game. At Mmm -mm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mmm, mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. All right, so here we go. Ball went on to kick it away. The field goal attempt is up and blocked. Cannon Mack now has a chance to try to return it. Jaden Dutine is, though, able to make the tackle. It could have been a lot worse. Jaden Baxter recovered it. And if it wasn't for Dutine, would have went back to the house and scored. Yeah, and Dutine ended up coming, is gingerly walking off the field after making the tackle there. But Baxter just came out of nowhere and was able to get back and block the kick. So Cannon Mack will take over at the 34. 15.3 still to go in the half. And a tough break for Baldwin on the blocked kick as the handoff goes to Welsh. Welsh brought down at the 37. Keith Vinson makes the tackle as that is the final play of the first half of action. Well, we had a little bit of everything. Penalties, turnovers, Fumbles, a blocked kick, and homecoming night at Cannon Mac. The score, Baldwin going into the break with the lead for the first time since week zero against Brashear. 7-3, Baldwin leads it against Cannon Mac. Stay tuned for our senior spotlight interview as well as the performance from the Baldwin band here on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. Now presenting the GBU Life Halftime Show on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. Sure, I'll be there at 5 a.m. I can binge one more episode. Let's face it, you don't always set yourself up for success. Five more minutes. Where are my work shoes? But GBU Life makes it easy with life insurance and annuity products to help secure your future so you have the freedom to do more of what you love. Congratulations! Retiring early must be nice. What are you going to do first? I think I'll sleep in. Secure your future today. Visit GBU.org. Coming up next on the GBU Life Halftime Show, a performance by the 2023 Baldwin Highlanders Marching Band.
There it is now.
At Mmm -mm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mmm Mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. The Baldwin Whitehall School District is seeking applicants for school bus drivers, school bus attendants, and school van drivers. Successful applicants will receive on-the-job training to secure the appropriate school bus driver's license. Candidates must be able to secure clearances prior to hire. For more information, please contact Dr. Rachel Sprouse at 412-885-6608 or via email mailed to rsprouse at bwschools.net. GBU Secure Life Insurance Policies help to provide for the ones you love after you're gone. But what happens when life gets challenging while you're here? GBU Life's permanent life insurance builds cash value that you can borrow against. Optional riders cover you in case of certain illnesses, allow you to increase your coverage without additional medical exams, and provide coverage for your whole family on one policy. And GBU's community focus means you have a chance to make a lifelong difference in your community. Visit GBU.org. You're watching the Fighting Hounders Sports Network's coverage of Baldwin football in 2023. I'm Austin Bechtold. Throughout the season, you will hear from various seniors on the Baldwin football team about their experiences on the program, as well as new players who are new to Baldwin football looking to leave a lasting impact. So sit back and get ready. It is time for our Senior Spotlight Series. Hi, everyone. I'm Austin Bechtold here for our Senior Spotlight Series on the Fighting Hounders Sports Network. Talking to all the seniors in the 2023-2024 class at Baldwin High School. And a new player joins us now, Alex Kearney, a new linebacker on the team. What's going on, man? Uh, you know, I'm just chilling, just working hard, like, just trying my best. That's really it so far. Yeah, how's it been so far, this Baldwin football experience? And really, the first couple of weeks getting ready for camp. Yeah, no, that'll be fun. Um, I'm really excited to play. Uh... Yeah, I've been working hard. I want to see how much, you know, I can do for the team. And, yeah. So, overall, in your first year, what made you want to play play this year? Well, I mean, uh, what made me want to play was I don't really, like, I don't really uh, work out outside of school, right? Even after practice, I work out. I don't really, like, bodybuilder stuff. But um, I would just wanted to, like, try my hand at the athletics. I wanted to try to be more athletic because bodybuilding and Athleticism aren't necessarily things that go hand in hand. You're just kind of like building muscle. But yeah, I just wanted to try to be more athletic and, you know, maybe help out, a, you know, a losing team. What is bodybuilding like? Bodybuilding? Uh, it's not bad. I mean, I'm sort of like, I'm not like super into it. It's sort of just like a bit of a hobby. You just eat a lot. You cut sometimes. And that's basically it. How did you get into that? Uh, I just wanted to... You know, try to impress girls a little bit, you know, be like, what do girls like? Muscles. That's what I got to do. And now you're going to try to be able to do that by sacking the quarterback. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. How did you pick linebacker? Uh, somebody just said go into linebacker or running back, and I was like, I don't like running back that much, but linebacker's pretty fun. It's a fairly simple uh, position. I think I'm more built for linebacker than most other things. So, yeah. And I'm sure the strength helps as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's about all I'm good for so far. You want to be somebody that makes the hits and not get Exactly. Hit. I want to destroy somebody this season. That is my main goal. I want to sit somebody down on the ground and be like, what just happened? You know, they wake up a different person. So what's it been like for you overall in the beginning of practices and everything to be able to, have you been able to hit and with full pads yet? No, not yet. I mean, we've, we've done some, like, hitting, just some, like, drills for, like, uh, moving people and looking for people uh, with the ball, the runner. And then, yeah, that's about it we've done for, that's about everything we've done for hitting, but I, I'm excited for when we start hitting. So how much of this program have you seen uh, pretty much from afar, not being a part of it until this year? Uh, I haven't really seen too many practices, like, when outside of being in them. So 
I can't say for sure, like how they've improved or how they've, you know, uh, been less effective, but overall, I think it's working pretty well. It's given me a different sort of, uh, workout than what I'm normal. So you only have to do. one year to do it. What type of legacy do you want to leave on the program? I just want to be somebody who helps, you know, the team get to another winning season or like a winning season, right? I don't need to be a star player. I want to support the star players. I just want us to get a win. I want us to be the best team possible. So one of the reasons why a lot of people end up joining teams and staying on teams and wanting to be a big part of it is because they have a lot of friends that you can be a part of it with. Who are some of those guys that have gravitated to you, towards you for football this year? Now we've got, you know, Gavin. We've got Tyler. You know, he's just John. Uh, definitely Michael and Michael uh, Ellis, Aiden Prozovich. Those are the people, like, I went into the uh, uh, sport with. And I've met some people, too, like Santino, uh, Tyler Carter. He's awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, it's about it so far. What are some of the people that you'd like to give a message to as you embark on this senior season and really throughout your whole entire time at Baldwin? Uh I want to say thank you to all my friends, Kevin Hutchinson, Ali Boudina, Ariel Michaels, Anand Gurung, uh, Roman Gurung, all those people. Y'all are awesome. I want to say thanks to my mom for doing just being the best mom ever. And I want to say thanks to my dad for also being the best dad ever and trying to get me to do things outside my comfort zone and being my gym partner. Alex, what are you looking forward to most this season? I'm looking forward to winning, baby. I, we are we are going to destroy the opposition. I can assure you that. I'm very excited to see you play this year. I'm going to destroy. That's all I could say, man. I'm going to just put people down. Alex, let's just, let's see you hit make some hard hits and do some damage for the defense this year. Thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Alex Kearney joining us here on the Fighting Alder Sports Network, our Senior Spotlight Series in 2023.
Just about set to go for the second half of action here at Cannon Mac. The score, Baldwin 7, Cannon McMillan 3. Tyler, it's been the story of turnovers. Baldwin being able to capitalize off one of them that put the ball at the two-yard line. Andrew Sharp able to score the only touchdown of the game. And the overall first half highlights, it's been a lot of turnovers, a lot of sloppy play. There's one of the first ones, those are covered by the Fighting Highlanders. John Kozar right on the spot to jump on the football. Cannon Mack has zero yards passing. There was a four-yard completion and a negative four-yard completion. So two total completions for no yards. Andrew Sharp, seven yards out. Only touchdown of the game. And the field goal, that was the extra point that was up and good. But the field goal was blocked for Baldwin at the end of the half. Nico McCurak, big run to help set up the attempt on the final Baldwin offensive possession of the half. Andrew Sharp able to rumble his way forward to further the ball into Canamac territory. Got close to the goal line, but a couple missed plays and the Chesseros field goal was no good. Got blocked. So it remains the score at 7-3. Total overall stats. Baldwin, cross your fingers, do whatever you got to do. Has not committed a penalty so far today. Cannon Mac four for 25. You're, you're looking at me like I just jinxed Baldwin. That's the announcer's jinx. It might be coming at some point. Two turnovers for Cannon Mac, one for Baldwin. Total yards, Cannon Mac 142, all on the ground. Yeah. Baldwin with 105. Total passing yards in the game. Tyler, over under 24 and a half right now. What's your guess? For Baldwin? Oh, total in the game. We know Cannon Mac has zero. We'll go over. I have faith in this Baldwin offense. Under 12 passing yards in the game combined from both teams. 12 passing yards. Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest the biggest um, answer that we'll get in this second half is whoever can start to throw the ball, I think, a little bit better. Obviously, the run game, you're going to continue with that if that's what's going to keep the op both offenses rolling. But if you can start to maybe mix it up a little bit with play action and start throwing the ball around on the field, it could start to spread out a defense and give uh, the other offense a bit more success. Kick off deep to Baldwin does stay in bounds and bounces into the end zone right past Andrew Sharp for a touchback. It was close to going out of bounds and another set up at the 35, but right there at the one it did reach the end zone. Yeah, great camera angle there. It just bounced inside that goal line, so Baldwin will get it out at the 20-yard line. McCurak was one of six for 12 yards. 
Evan Good, the only one to catch a pass. Andrew Sharpen, 12 rushes, ran for 31 and a score. Keith Minson, two rushes for two yards. How about Nico McCurek? Six rushes for 60 yards in the first half of play. And the ball went offense, takes the field at the 20-yard line. First down and 10. With McCurek in the shotgun, two receivers line up to the near side, two to the far side. Sharp the back. Gets the handoff. Sharp patiently dances in the backfield and waits for his blocking to emerge to set up a gain of four. And it'll bring up second down and six. Fayetta on the stop after the four-yard pickup. Yeah, and, and they've been able to complement McCurek and Sharp on the ground so far in the first half. They're going to have to continue that here in the second half. And you mentioned it, the six carries for 60 yards on the ground for McCurek. How great has he been in the first half? And it's just a position and right he's in the position right now where he's got to continue to give the ball into the hands of his playmakers and let them go out there and do the work. He doesn't have to try to go out there and make a significant play or try to go above and beyond. Just take what the defense gives you. Quick pass caught by Minson. Minson trying to run over a defender. Not able to do so, though, as good tackle made by Jaden Baxter up from his safety spot. Short pickup to the 28. It'll be second. It'll be third down, rather. And three yards, maybe two. Yeah, I mean, it's not a, a huge gain by any means, but it puts them in a third down position that is one you want to be in for the Highlanders, the one that they haven't been in all season. And it's third and short. I mean, this is a third down conversion. They can easily put the ball in the hands of Sharp and let him go out there and get you the two yards. This is your money down, really. Try to get this offense jump started to begin the second half. And the handoff goes to Andrew Sharp. Sharp fighting forward, gets the first down. Forward progress puts him past the 30, maybe to the 31-yard line. Regardless, it's good enough for a ball one first. Yeah, and I mean, a great hole there at the line of scrimmage. It was clogged up early, but he had a great initial hole to go into, and Cannon Mack was just too late getting the sharp and trying to slow down that forward progress that he was able to build up, and he was able to push his way over the line to gain and keep this ball on offense on the field. Shotgun for McCurak with two receivers near side and two to the far side as well. McCurak, quick pass. It's caught. Keith Minson past the 35. Rumbles over a defender past the 40 and another ball went first down. Ball does come out at the end of it. But Minson was down on the play at the 43. When the ball came out, it was Howard that thought potentially it was a fumble, tried to run with it, but officials ruled him down by contact. Yeah, and I mean, here's what I'm talking about. Just give it to the hands of your playmaker. Minson tries to run over a man. Lucky, though, that the ref, uh, the official on the near sideline rolled him down. Could have easily gone Cannon Mack way. It was very close. Him the ball back. Yeah, very close to potentially being a fumble there on the play. So here goes this ball one offense. Two first downs on the drive. It's a similar type of formation in terms of where the receivers are set. Now Minson goes in motion to the far side, and they pitch it to Sharp. Sharp trying to run far side is brought down way past the line of scrimmage at the 39-yard line. Kyle Garrow on the stop, the senior linebacker. Team high in tackles, 74 entering today. The next closest was 48. Yeah. And Baldwin, again, they, they try to get Sharp outside of the hashes, running out there in the open space, but it just hasn't gone their way out to that far sideline or out in between the numbers and the hashes at all. And once again, Cannon Mack comes up with a stop pushing them backwards. It was for a five-yard loss. Second down and five upcoming. Former Kirak in the shotgun with two receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Everyone gets set with Sharp as the back. Rolling out near side, McCurak with time. McCurak starts the run with it. Flag is thrown, 45 in past midfield into Canamac territory. Goes McCurak, but this one's probably coming back. Flag thrown right at the 39. Looks like a holding call. And the ball went offense is moving back. Holding penalty called on Dom Brown at right tackle. Yeah, and it was as soon as McCurak escaped the pocket and came to the near sideline, Dom Brown just holding on to that defender for too long and got a bit of the jersey as the defender was trying to pull away. And a referee makes the holding call. And there it is, the first Baldwin penalty of the game. You know, if you go a whole game without a penalty... Do you blame the announcers, Jinx? No. No, I'm not, I'm not blaming you? you. I'm not blaming you. 
Uh, maybe I blame myself. Second down and 25. Ball with the 29. Anyway, I mean, it was bound to happen at some point. Do you go a whole game without a penalty? I mean, that'd, I mean, that'd, be, that'd, I mean, that'd be a fantastic game. But Kirak with time. Quick pass over to Sharp. Has some blocking far side. Sharp breaks off the tackle, spins his way to the 35. Pick up there of about six yards. Yeah, McCurek just so cool, calm, and collected. Chasing his first career win. He just flicks that ball over there. Let Sharp do the rest. Obviously, you wanted a little bit more there. It's now third and way too long compared to the last third down they were faced with. But Ryan Blinn made the tackle. So here we go. Third and long, needing to get into Canamac territory at the 46. Third and 19 at the 35. Shotgun for McCurak. Maybe a quick pass, faking it that way. McCurak gets hit as he throws. Can't get the ball away, so he's sacked. And once again, on the stop, Ryan Blinn on the sack after making the tackle on the last play. Yeah, and this is this is a tough one. He's going to want this back because he had Kozar wide open down the sideline. Just off to the right of the screen over there, there's a mix-up between what looked to be Howard and the and the safety back there. They both went and guarded the same man. Kozar was alone on the on the 50, standing by himself, and Mc, the pressure just got there. McCure couldn't throw it away. And it seemed like the pump fake really baited Canamac defensively as well. That could have been the play to be able to really break this one open for Baldwin as McCurack punts it away. Not very deep. Somewhat of a high kick. Canamac stays away from it, and it sits at the 40-yard line of the Big Macs. So a clean kick away, and after that, you know, the first thing that kind of came to mind for me, Tyler, is after that play that was so close, if McCurack's able to get it away to potentially being converted, big play, made me think of... And it's not something that would happen in that situation, but Baldwin, earlier this year, ran a fake punt that was not called by the sideline. It was run by the players. And it makes you think in that type of situation, whether it's fourth down and long, maybe we will see a fake punt again, That whether it's instilled more confidence that you know the players want to run it, the coaching staff puts it in there and gets a lot of work on it, as Welsh on the carry doesn't get much at all. Ball does come out at the end, but... Welsh is down by contact. We've seen a, the ball hit the turf a lot today, and it goes for a loss of about two or three. Yeah, I mean, someone's lost the key because there's just been no ball security so far in this one. I mean, there's been a couple of plays, even on this first Baldwin drive of the half, where it, the ball has just come out at the end of plays. I mean, both the ball carriers have been down on in both instances, but it's just been something like just a few more inches or a second earlier and again, it could be going the other way. Hand off to Welsh. Nothing there again. Stopped right near the initial line of scrimmage. I don't even think he got back there. So the 39, DeLon Brown on the stop. How great has DeLon Brown been? Yeah, he's been a guy, again, that we haven't called his name too much. But in a, in a game like this, in a one-possession game, he's stepped up big and he's made a few of uh, a few plays. Third down and 12. Needed to get to midfield. Pass thrown up for grabs. Incomplete. Was trying to connect on the far sideline for Maddo. Incomplete. Jansma is still not completed a pass. It was broken up defensively very well by the Fighting Highlanders. Looked like Noah Sakani in coverage. Yeah, and I was going to say before the down, I mean, at some point they're going to have to put faith in the freshman quarterback and in now, Jansma and have him throw downfield. Williams able to get the punt away as John Kozar is back deep. Takes a bunch of steps back and now will let the punt continue to roll. Not a great decision from Kozar to let that one bounce in terms of field position inside the 10. Good punt from Williams after the bounce to the 7. Head coach Mike Williams of Cannon Mack. He's the head football coach, also the assistant athletic director. He's in his ninth year as the head coach. He has the second most wins of any football coach in Cannon Mack history. And since arriving at Cannon Mack, his teams have broken 30 school records. They return to the playoffs for the first time in a decade in 2018, 19, 21, 22. And he was honored to be selected as the offensive line coach to the West in the Big 33 game. How about that in 2018? 
and is one of the District 7 directors of BSFCA and was voted Skylights Coach of the Year in 2018, Whitfield 6A Coach of the Year in 2019, trying to rally his troops, currently down 7-3. Hand off with lots of running room for Andrew Stripe. Still going. Sharp. Bouncing off the tacklers. Past the 30. Lots of open running room. Created past the 40. Midfield. Lots of blockers. Sharp. With open running room. Past the 30. Sharp still on his feet. 25 20. 15 10. 5. All the way. 92 yards. No flags. Touchdown, Baldwin. The best play of the season from Andrew Sharp. Yeah, and you need a big play. Well, who do you call? 3 1. That's exactly who you call, and he does the rest. Turf Monster almost got him there, but it doesn't matter because he had two guys blocking in front of him. And, I mean, what what more do you have to say about Andrew Sharp? Again, another big play when Baldwin not necessarily needs it, but once won the most. A huge, huge play from Andrew Sharp to put the Fighting Highlanders double-digit points. Extra point up. And good. DeCessero, Anthony DeCessero's extra point up and good. 14 to 3. 5 14 in the third quarter here on the Fighting Highlander Sports Network. Baldwin up by 11. Shopping for a new or pre owned vehicle? Dean Honda is one of the largest volume dealerships in the Pittsburgh area, offering sales, service, and parts. Our service center offers competitive pricing and same day service. If you're looking to sell your vehicle, stop by Dean Honda and leave with a check in hand. Visit us on Route 51 in Pleasant Hills or DeanHonda.com. Well, Tyler, we'll use an old line from last year. Andrew Sharp, take my breath away on that run. 92 yards to the house. No flags. No nothing. He got past the 30. There was one defender back there and three Baldwin guys leading the way. We talked about it so much early on in the first in the first quarter, in the first half. Baldwin's toughness today, Baldwin's effort has been at an all-time high since the first game tonight where guys are out there lead blocks, yep. running down the field, setting the tone, setting the tempo, making sure that nobody even had a finger on Andrew Sharp on that long run. DeCessero's kick is fielded at the 35 on a fair catch. Yeah, and, and trust me, like when we say that, it's not we're questioning the effort or the commitment. I mean, this no. is just another level that we have not seen. Exactly. Like, granted, we've seen them. They've played some phenomenal teams, some great teams in 5A and 6A. Well, I mean, you played— it, It's going to be tough when you go up against opponents like North Allegheny, Peters. Yes. But, I mean, when you come out here and you play with this this level, this, this energy that they've brought, it's just— it begs the question, where has it been all season? Well, think about it. You play Peters Township, the top team in all 5A. Point differential, they're the best by far of really anybody in the Whippeal. North Allegheny, the second best team in 6A. One of the top five teams in the state. Not easy at all. Running near side, Welsh. Past the 40, 45. Lots of running room past midfield. 45, 40, Welsh. 30, 20. He's gone. Touchdown. Cannon Mack. And let the offense begin. 65 yards. Yeah, I mean, there's not too many backs that can do it better than Sharp. Well, Welsh responds, and it was a game on the ground in the first half, and from one running back to another, I mean, it's going to be 31-2 and two that ultimately may be the deciding factors at the end of this ballgame. So a long run from Sharp of 92. Zach Welsh says, I have one in me as well. Extra point up and good. From 65 yards out. Well, we got a fun one here in the second half of play. 14-10. to 10. Baldwin still out in front of Cannon Mac with 5.02 to go in the third quarter of play. You're watching the Fighting Hounder Sports Network's coverage of Baldwin football. If you need insurance, you need an agency that's sharp. The Sharp Insurance Agency is an independent agency and distinguish themselves by providing face-to-face -face customer service and reviewing coverage to provide the best possible value for their clients. Hi, I'm Mike Sharp. Lean on my years of experience in the Pittsburgh area to find you the best insurance coverage because when insurance companies compete, you win. The Sharp Insurance Agency. Contact us today to have your personal or business insurance professionally reviewed. So with 5.02 to go in the third quarter of play, 
Baldwin will get the ball back after that long run. But it's really been sparked by Andrew Sharp. I mean, you have to be so excited if you're Baldwin. You're the Baldwin faithful. Anybody supporting the Fighting Highlanders of what you've seen today, it's been really fantastic effort, fantastic play, great blocking on the Sharp touchdown run on both of them. Excited to see what the Fighting Highlanders have in store for the final 17 minutes of regulation. Kick is away. That's a live ball. Baldwin needs to fall on it. Fighting Highlanders are able to do so right past the 30-yard line. And I don't. I may have miscounted there, but it looked like Baldwin only had 10 on the field. Yeah, they, they brought one. They took one of the players off, yes. and I think they were fine because they had 11 on, and they didn't replace the the Baldwin player that came off the field. So I think they they made that return with with one less guy. They but brought. Yeah, nonetheless, Jeffrey, they have it. They still have the ball. Jeffrey Kloskowski was the one that ran off the field like right before the kickoff. And when you see that, you think they have too many men on the field. But in that case, they were they were fine right where they were. And flags before the snap. Andre Divin, left tackle, guilty of a false start. Baldwin decides to call a timeout. So it's first down and 10. First down and 15 after the penalty, rather. Ball at the 25-yard line here at Kinemac. Maya, can you come in here, please? Already. Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. The catch over the Hobart defender, right. And that is six points well, on I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Fourteen to ten. After the ball one timeout, it's first down and 15. And Tyler, what have you seen so far throughout this quarter? I mean, it's just been a battle between both teams. Offensively, we talked about it at the start of the second half. It's, it's going to be a game one on the ground, and so far it's been the case, both teams with rushing touchdowns in the quarter. McCurak keeps it, now pitches it. Move made by Kozar at the 25, right at the initial line of scrimmage, so no gain on first down. Yeah, and with the way those kind of pitches have been going in the last couple of weeks between the quarterback and the guy who's receiving it, it kind of a hold-your-breath moment, but Kozar yeah. is able to corral it in and spin move but can't get back to the line of scrimmage. McCurak in the shotgun with three receivers lining up to the far side. Now they send Sharp that way too. Swing it out that way. Sharp on the reception. Get him out in space and let him go. Pass the 35-40. Sharp down the sideline. Out of bounds on the Cannon Max side of the field. Way good enough for a first down. And it's spotted right at the 50-yard line. And that's the same exact play they ran a few drives ago. Just bring Sharp in motion across the formation. Swing him out giving the ball in space and three blockers ahead of him, and he's able to do the rest. And how about his utilization of a stiff arm at the end of it, too? I mean, he's one of the best you'll see in the WPIAL using it. Yeah, and the, the fact of the matter is, is he knows he's probably going to get pushed out of bounds anyways, but he still throws it, and, and that's the great thing about him is he, he doesn't stop until, until that whistle blows. Two receivers line up each side of the formation. Handoff goes to Sharp. Tries to bounce off the first tackler. Still going. Sharp takes a big hit at the 45. Is able to fall at that spot as Baxter helps to make the tackle. Calgaro as well was in there on the stop after a gain of five. And again, it's not one of the, the those pretty Andrew Sharp runs. It's just a tough, gritty run where they try to run him out in between the guard and tackle, and he's able to find a, a gap and just tries to get lower than the defender coming in to tackle him. So we had... Two long runs on back-to-back -back plays that really sparked the offense in this game. Really two long touchdowns and 
about 30 seconds of action as Sharp carries it. Positive gain of about three yards. 92 yards on the Sharp carry. And then after the kickoff, 65 yards for Welch, putting us at the 14 to 10 score. Carry there by Sharp to help set up third down and two. And the scoreboard and the pretty good sound system here helping to fire up the crowd. Pretty neat, the scoreboard here at Cannon Mac, new video board. Recently installed, I mean, not too long ago. 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Third down. Sharp, off the middle, needs the 40. Doesn't look like he got there. Only made it to the 41. Nearside official puts him half a yard short. Yeah, and it was a good job by Canamac just getting low, the defensive line getting low at the line of scrimmage and just pushing those offensive linemen up and backwards in the sharp, and they were able to slow him up before he was able to push his way through. And we'll see. This is one of those moments where you talk about earlier about possibly a fake punt. Well, that was back in their own territory. Now, I mean, you're up again in kind of no man's land. You do have space that you could punt it in, but I mean, this is one of those things you only need a half a yard. Lax made the tackle, and Andrew Sharp is not on the field. Here for fourth down and one. Baldwin took him off, standing right near Chris Rosano, the running backs coach. As Baldwin lines up with Devin Taylor, the back, appearing to go for this. Brown Minson also on the field as well. Bricoli in the backfield, too. And Baldwin wants to call a timeout to talk about it as the play clock was expiring. Might have taken the delay of game. Think they got the timeout in there. Yeah, it's one of those things where... You know, two timeouts used in the quarter in a close game. I mean, those may come back to hurt Baldwin only yeah. having one going in the fourth. You know, obviously you need to take one there because the the play clock expiring. It's it's either well if you, you take the timeout and you only need the half yard, or you go you push yourself back and you have to punt. and you punt. Yeah. So the decision here is that Baldwin will be going for it. At least that that's what you're led to believe by the yeah. timeout. Yeah. You're not going to burn one and then punt. At least I'd hope not. But I you'd mean, hope not. I, again, I mean, it's. I don't think they will. You would imagine that. I mean, maybe could. put a couple, maybe put a couple of guys in the backfield and try to catch Canamac off guard. Do you hand it off to Minson? Do you hand it off to Sharp? Do you hand it off to Taylor? Or do you just pound it right at them with Sharp? Well, and that's the thing is, not only did you use the entirety of the play clock, but you also get the timeout. You can put Sharp back on the field. I mean, maybe it's one of those things you just throw out a formation and he's on there show now. Show Canamac what you're lining up in, and then bring on bring him back. Or on the field. I don't know how many how much it's practiced more so in high school football than the NFL. Why not just put McCurack under center and let him move forward? and A little tush push. Or the brotherly shove, whatever you want to call it, on the opposite side of the state. McCurack was not ready for the snap. It goes over everyone's head and is recovered by Canamac at the 40. Absolute disaster for Baldwin as the snap recovered by Calgaro and exactly the opposite of Anything Baldwin could have expected, anticipated, and ever hoped for. Yeah, I mean, you saw it real quick there on the replay, but if McCurick was standing back up to look back at the sideline and the snap came right at him, I mean, it's unfortunate because even Sharp was not even looking in the direction of where the snap came from. Nobody so was. That ball just went past two fighting Highlanders, and what was fourth and a half and a half a yard is now Canamac ball inside Baldwin territory. Hand it off. Welsh with running room. Welsh cuts it back inside. Welsh still going past the 30. Welsh near the 25. Gets the first down. And a good gain of about 13, 14 yards before Noah Sikani brought him down. And again, leaning on the running back. It's been Welsh, and he's able to get to the far side of the formation. Has a gap, and once those legs get turning, he's just like Sharp, very hard to bring down. First down at the 29, hand it off. Welsh, Welsh still going, past the 20. Welsh dragged down a couple yards short. Brought down by Joey Wasco. At least second down and two. Yeah, he's able to jump through a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and then is able to force two guys to ram down to the turf. That was Don Brown rather on the tackle for Baldwin. One minute left in the quarter. Hand it off, Welsh. Baldwin this time trying to break it up. Devin Taylor there on the tackle, trying to force the ball out, and it is out. 
Baldwin trying to pick it up with the Fighting Highlanders, Malongo Kasuba is there. Kasuba was able to push it towards another Baldwin defender. Still no signal yet, Vince Bercoli fell down on the football. Still no signal. And they rule forward progress was stopped on the play. It'll stay with Ganimac. Yeah, I don't know about that. There's no whistle to, to signal the play dead. No whistle. So Baldwin's still going at the ball, and they're able to get it free. I mean, I was fully expecting a whistle to come out, and then as right. soon as that ball goes free, it the, the play was let to be go on. And there was no whistle. Yeah. Not that we heard, at least. And we're like 15 yards from the field. Fake the handoff to Welsh. Now trying to throw it his way. The pass is caught. But Keith Minson decks him right at the 25-yard line. And then John Kozar trying to pull a Baldwin defender away, trying to prevent a penalty as it brings up fourth down. Yeah, and Minson, we talked about his defensive abilities. He reads it all the way, the faked hand, the, the play action. It goes to Walsh, and Minson just read it all the way, able to blow up uh, Walsh after he makes the catch. So what will Canamac do on fourth down? Well, we have to wait and find out as we'll change ends for the opposite side to the opposite side to begin the fourth quarter of play. Put up the fours. Baldwin up by four, looking to try to get a stop on fourth down. Coming up next, 14 to 10. We go to the fourth quarter on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Trump Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services, including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. I love the things I build, and the people I build them with. But I got plans that go beyond buildings. I move some of my savings into a GBU Asset Guard annuity, so I can retire when something unexpectedly great happens. You made the right call. You chose a GBU Asset Guard annuity, a multi-year guaranteed annuity which works to grow your funds at a locked-in interest rate for a term of two to five years. Two to five. My son's got that sweetheart football scholarship. Every game, I'll be there, thanks to some help from GBU Life. Here we go, fourth quarter from Cannon Mack. It begins, 12 minutes left in regulation. Cannon Mack football at the 25. Fourth down and six coming up. What will the Big Macs do? Field goal, go for it. Needing to get to the 19. The freshman quarterback, Ty Jansma, four of six entering the day. No passing yards at halftime. In the shotgun, he's going to throw it. Far side of the field. Rolls out. Pass deep down the field is caught. First down, Cannon Mack. A huge reception made by Jaden Baxter to keep the drive alive. Yeah, and you got to remember that catch if they go on the score here. What a fabulous throw over the defender's head. And Baxter is able to climb the ladder and go up and get that ball. Injured player down for Baldwin. Far side of the field, being attended to by the medical staff. Can't tell who exactly it is yet. Noah Sakani was able to help make the tackle on Baxter to bring him down. Looks like John Kozar down on the turf for Baldwin and is being looked at right at the 10. So as he's attended to by the staff, we'll take a break. First down and goal coming up for Ken and Mack on the Fighting Howler Sports Network. At Mmm Mmm Pizza Baldwin, the name says it all. Try one of our pizzas, subs, wings, salads, or calzones today. We use fresh, high-quality cheese every day to ensure the best-tasting pizza in Baldwin. Our homemade pizza sauce and vast selection of toppings will be sure to leave you saying, Mmm Mmm. Visit us at 5001 Curry Road at the Curry Commons Plaza or give us a call at 412-885-1005. We're also now hiring all positions. Fourteen to ten, Baldwin leads it. It's first down and goal coming up for Cannon Mack. As John Kozar able to walk off of the field under his own power, might just be out for one play. Appears to be okay. 
Big couple of plays coming up here, Tyler. First down and goal at the eight. Welsh the back in the pistol formation, standing behind Jansma. Welsh up the middle, 5 4 3 2 1. Touchdown, Cannon Mack from eight yards out as the Big Macs take the lead. Welsh with nothing but open running room up the middle. The eight yard score puts Canamac ahead by two. Extra point would make it three. Zach Welsh's eighth touchdown of the year, second of the game. Bard's extra point. Up and good. 17 to 14, Cannon Mac leads. How will Baldwin respond? We'll find out coming up next on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network. Buy one window, get a free unicorn. Just kidding. Are you tired of dishonest offers? I'm Brian Murphy, owner of Easy Home Exteriors, and we take your home seriously. If you need windows, roofing, siding, or doors, we'll give you fair, honest pricing the first time, every time. No pressure, no gimmicks. We'll give you a free estimate. You don't even need to be home. Call 412-678-7008. That's 412-678-7008. If you're lucky, we'll throw in a unicorn. <laughs> So after Baldwin was up by two possessions, Canamac had stormed back. Two touchdown runs from Welsh. And the first lead for the Big Macs since around four minutes in the first quarter when it was 3 nothing. So you got to ask, how will the Baldwin offense respond? Minson and Sharper back. How will Baldwin deploy all the stops to pull this one out? Close game in the fourth quarter. Baldwin desperately wants to have. Bards on a short kick. Sends it to the 22. Where it's fielded and decked at about the 28. That's where the Fighting Hounders will set up shop after the Taylor return. And that was, might have been good on the return. Actually, Warren Jones, my apologies. Number seven. Plays wide receiver for the Fighting Highlanders, a junior at 5'10". And the drive already moving backwards before it can begin. Penalty called on Chenzo Pacella, the center. So now first down and 15 into 24. Penalty is an obstacle that Baldwin needs to try to overcome. Now 12 seconds remaining on the play clock. Baldwin's still in the huddle. Only one timeout. Needing to try to get to the line and snap the football. Four seconds. Three, two. Ball was not going to get the snap away. And this is either going to be a delay game or another timeout. Baldwin is going to take the delay game. Yeah, I mean, there's there's just you can't have there's really no excuse for going backwards two times before you even run the first play of the drive. First down and 20, you just can't have that right after a dead ball penalty. Mm -hmm. So now 15 seconds on the play clock. Sharp the back with McCurak in the pistol. Hands it off, sharp, nothing there. Only a couple yards. Makes his way to the 22, a short gain of maybe three. Blinn on the tackle defensively for Cannon Mack after the short pickup. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I do agree with head coach Dana Brown Jr. deciding not to use that last timeout, just take the penalty. 
But, I mean, again, new coaching staff, you know, maybe there's a, a bit of miscommunication, all that kind of stuff. But in a big moment like this, down by only a, a score, a field goal, well, you just can't have those mistakes. You've worked as a coaching staff through six games. This is the seventh. A sharp not able to break off of that run. Back to the line of scrimmage. Third and forever coming up. Calgaro on the stop and a ball one player down. Yeah, and if, if things could get any worse, it's Andrew Sharp who's slow to get up. Sharp will hobble off the field under his own power. Taylor comes onto the field to replace him. Yeah, and he does have to come off because they stopped the play for Andrew Sharp. So he, he has to come off for the play. So they're going to have to get the third down or get close as close as they can to the line to gain without Andrew Sharp. Vince Bercoli runs onto the field as well. As Brown runs off. Taylor the back. Three receivers to the near side, one on the far side. McCurak rolls out near side. McCurak pass downfield, caught. Noah Sakani and running room. That's the 40. 45 Sakani to midfield. Baldwin picks it up on third and 18 and moves into Canamac territory. Yeah, and, and that was an interesting play call because they moved McCurak. To the, to the opposite side, so he has to throw across his body on the run. And Sakani breaking off tackles. Yeah, not only is he able to get it, but then he's able to turn off field and get that yak the yard after catch, and that's what's going to get Baldwin enough for the first down. Wow. A play when Baldwin needed it most to the 49 of Cannon Mack. And, I mean, without Sharp on the field, someone's got to rise to the occasion there on third down. And he comes back on now. First down and 10. And more movement from Baldwin. Looks like Vince Bercoli on the far side. A little too eager to go. How much credit should Noah Shikani get on that play? A ton yeah. for breaking on I tackles. Mean, extra effort. A lot. Oh, it was third and 18 to be able to pick it up. You roll on the near side of the field. That takes away a lot of options to pass it downfield. Yeah. And... For him to be able to catch the ball was short of the sticks by about five, seven yards, break off some tackles, move the chains. So critical. Yeah, but you got to give uh, McCurak some some of the credit there. Yeah. I mean, to throw across his body on Very the good move, it's not easy. Baldwin does get the snap away. Sharp gets a couple yards after the five-yard penalty. Back the ball into Baldwin territory. Sabatucci on the tackle defensively. 87 for Ken and Mack, the 6'2 sophomore. Only a short pickup of about two yards, second down and 13 coming up. Eight and change, a little over eight and a half to go here in the fourth quarter of play. 17 to 14, Ken and Mack leads it. Two receivers to the far side, tight end in the formation as well. And more pre-snap movement from Baldwin. And it slowly just started the snowball here, and, and the, the penalties from the previous weeks have come back to once again haunt this team in a drive that's, again, I mean, they're still going to get another chance to the ball, but, I mean, it, it is so critical for them to have success here on this, on this drive. And they were able to overcome it on third and 18. But, Tyler, it's going to be so hard to try to do it twice. Second down and 18. Need to get to the 39 of Canamac to convert. McCurak rolls out far side of the field. Pass is bounced incomplete. Was trying to connect with Kozar. Third down and 18 coming up. Bayetta had the coverage. And again, with the line the game being the Cannon Mac 39. It's got to, you got to think you have two chances here at picking up the first down. It's just get, again, get as close as you possibly can to the Kennemack 39. Because if you don't convert, at least they're not starting on your own side of the field. And it's going to depend on what happens on this play, especially. If Baldwin is able to get a good chunk with five seconds still on the play clock, needing to get set four, three, nobody can go in motion, need to snap the ball, Baldwin can't get it off. And Dana Brown Jr. throws his headset against the ground in utter frustration as his offense just cannot get in sync to get the ball snapped in time. Another pre-snap penalty makes it fourth and for yeah. third and forever. And if 
if the huddle the huddle hasn't worked twice now on this drive, if it's not going to work, then just get your guys to the line, deliver the play, or give the play to McCurek, and then he delivers it to them while they're basically already set at the line of scrimmage. You just Sprint. can't continue to do that. Sprint to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers line up each side, McCurek in the pistol. Sends the candy in motion. Fake the handoff. McCurek, middle of the field. Pass is completed. Incomplete, rather. Keith Minson was looking for a flag. If it would have been pass interference, would have kept the drive alive. But the incompletion sets out fourth down and 23. And Baldwin surely will punt. And again, Tyler, two timeouts that are gone. Only with one remaining, 7.37 to go. Going to need to get a stop. Sharp goes in motion. McCurak gets the punt away. A lot deeper of a kick as nobody's back for Ken and Mack. Takes a sideways hop and is picked up by Sakani at the 29 yard line. It's a decent field position for Ken and Mack to start it off as it was a clean pocket for McCurak to send it away. But Baldwin has not proven that it can stop Ken and Mack up front and Zach Welsh's running game. Yeah, at least not in the second half. Not in the here. second half. First half, yes. Yeah. Second half, not so much. I mean, there's been bright spots that this defensive line and, and the linebacking core has been able to create in, in stopping Welsh. But at, overall, at a bird's eye view, Welsh has basically had his way in the run game so far this half. So Baldwin needs to make a play. First down for the Canamac offense. Jansma. Hands it off. Welsh, a little bit of miscommunication on the handoff. Welsh runs far side and is pushed out by Taylor after a pickup of about three or four yards. Yeah, it looks like the the freshman quarterback just didn't know which way Welsh was going to or which side he was supposed to deliver the handoff on. He went to the left. Welsh went to the right. And unfortunately uh, for them, it still bought them enough time for Welsh to get upfield. He went for a pickup of three. For Welsh, who lines up in the pistol again. He gets the handoff. Welsh up the middle. Lots of running room. Welsh past the 40. Lots of room midfield. Welsh, 40. Spun down. Still going. Welsh past the 30. Welsh, 25-20. Welsh, 15. 10. Drag down inside the 10-yard line by Mwongo Kasuba. He was not ruled down at the 30-35 yard line. A huge gain inside the red zone. And what could be a killer knockout punch. Yeah, and there might have been a hold there at the end of the run, but no flag on the field. And again, Welsh does what he does best, puts his head down and just continues to boulder his way down the field. Ball went able to run a player off the field as they're trying to send Andrew Sharp on a blitz as well. Hand off to Welsh. Welsh bounces it back inside. Welsh towards the end zone. Welsh is into the end zone. Touchdown, Canamac. The game has flipped on a dime, with Canamac now up by two scores. Yeah, I mean, Baldwin hurt themselves with their own penalties, and Canamac takes advantage of it. It's as simple as that. You know who it's going to go to. It's going to go to Welsh. You, I don't know why they didn't just decide to load the box and, and sell out for the run. If they beat you in the air with the freshman quarterback, they beat you in the air. Extra point up and good. 10-point game. 24-14. to 14. Cannon Mack on homecoming night. 6.41 to go. Jumps out in front by 10 points here on the Fighting Hounders. Sports Network will be back right after this. Gets it to go right before the buzzer. He said thank you for the space. I'll step into that. Bang, bang. Deep left corner three. That one's nothing but net. Six seconds of counting. We'll pull up a three. Top of the key. Banks it home. Oh, uh, Tyler, that's the sweet sound of basketball coming up in the air. Fighting Highlander Sports Network coverage of Baldwin boys and girls basketball resumes in December. We're back for another year, third year covering basketball. So excited for that. Going to be a lot of fun.
Bard sends the kickoff away. Pretty short kick and is fielded by Baldwin at the 25-yard line. And to around the 35. A 10-yard return. So 6.37 still to go. Baldwin at 1-5. and five. Has not won a game in section play. This is a non-section game. Canamac in 6A, Baldwin in 5A. Really, you don't know what's going to happen after this year. Where Baldwin will be positioned, 5A, 6A. There's thoughts. Maybe it'll be... 6A again next year, maybe staying in 5A, really don't know. November will have a better clue of what the situation will play out to be. And two years ago, this was a section matchup. McCurak sends Sharp out and tries a quarterback run that goes nowhere. Loss of one on the play and... Singleton on the tackle. Flag comes in at the end. So an incidental face mask, a five-yard penalty. And, and i got to be honest here, Tyler, how many times have you seen that call before? Oh, once, 30 seconds ago. <laughs> That's probably it, an incidental face mask. I mean, we've been around the uh, the program for a while. I mean, that's the first time, at least, that I can remember that being called in our, what, yeah. three, four years? Yeah, I'm not sure how incidental a face mask can be, but... McCurax pass to Sharp. He slips and falls at the 38. Goes for a loss. It'll be second down. And after the five-yard penalty set up first down and five, brings up second down and six, one-yard loss on the play. So for Baldwin, six minutes left. Needing to try to strike quick and try to recover an onside kick. A lot have to go right here. Andrew Sharp runs off the field a little bit late. 16 seconds on the play clock, though. Still some time. McCurak rolls out far side. With time, McCurak deep downfield. Has a man open. Keith Minson diving catch is made at the 40-yard line. Minson making his way to the 38, now into Canamac territory. Yeah, what a catch by Minson there as McCurak takes a shot at the, as he throws that pass, and Minson's able to just get low, and he, his knee comes down in play. There's so a good shot of it right here in the end zone. It is a catch, as we see here again. Spectacular grab, one when they needed it the most. Empty backfield for McCurak. Rolls out to the near side. Facing pressure, McCurak dumps it off. Pass is caught. At the 25-yard line, reception made by Noah Sakani, and now being ruled incomplete. And once again, McCurak takes a shot at the end of that one. But unfortunately, the pass just couldn't be completed to the ground, and Baldwin will have to try again on second down. Wonder if, on the last few passing plays, if McCurak was over the line of scrimmage at any point. If he release that one on the previous play or two plays ago now I, I think he if he would have been like a second later I think it would have been you know maybe an illegal forward pass. and here we go seven seconds on the play clock ball was not even close to snapping this and you can hear so much yelling up here in the booth from the Baldwin coaches so much confusion miscommunication and Baldwin decides to call its final timeout and it just is inconceivable to think that this can just continue to happen over and over and over in a game again in a game that you've led for majority of the time entering the fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I don't. You, you know, I'm not in the huddle, so I don't. I don't really know what's going on. I mean, from the outside, it looks like just either miscommunication or the play not being delivered fast enough to McCurick and his offense. I mean, there, there's just no there's no words for what we've seen. And, and this isn't just a problem that's been occurring through the season. This is the first time we've really seen it, yeah. and, and it's tonight. And in a spot when they need this offense to keep moving as seamless as it's been, it, this, has, this has honestly been the biggest hurt so far in the second half. You know, you could say the penalties, but even then it's just – the, the offense cannot move if they don't have the correct play, if they're not well, on the same page. That's part of it with yeah. the penalties. I mean, what are the main three things that, you know, I like to point to? It's tips, overthrows, and penalties. We've seen a tip that almost resulted in an, inc in an interception. Overthrows really haven't been the case, but the penalties have been so dire 
for this Baldwin offense. And you're trying to overcome not just a solid Canamac defense, but also yourselves. You're beating, yeah. you're not letting Canamac beat you. You're also beating yourselves. Canamac also, from what it's done in the second half, has beaten you. But at the same time, it's just added on with beating yourselves with the penalties that you just cannot have. Yeah, and you're trying to chase the game with 5.30 left to go. You know, it, that's not helping. Sharp went in motion. McCurak steps up into the pocket. Trying to, try to get it away, but can't. Taken down at the 41-yard line. McCurak sacked. Once again, Sabatucci is in the backfield for the loss. Yeah, and it's just nowhere to go for McCurak. They've done a good job on the outsides containing him from a defensive standpoint. And now it's a longer third down spot here. Third and 13. McCurak looks over to the sideline and tries to get everybody set up. Three receivers now on the near side of the field with Sharp the back, one to the far side. 10 seconds on the play clock. McCurak roll out to the near side. Has to try to escape the pressure. Pass downfield is incomplete. Kozar, Sakani, couple of guys in between, but it was broken up defensively by Jaden Baxter. Yeah, and how about it? Kozar, before the snap, looking to the sideline with his arms up in the air, had no idea what the play was and just happened to run a little slant route and found himself in a bunch of space and in a spot where, or in a window where McCurak tried to fit him in the ball and he just couldn't. And, and this honestly feels like the game with the way this Canamac offense has been going. It could have made it a more reasonable fourth down as well, but you're right, Tyler. This is probably the game. Two score a game, 24 14 score. Fourth down and 13. Flag flies at the snap. McCurak can't get the pass away. He's decked at the 45. Brought down by Gino Calgaro on the sack. And with the flag appearing to be on Baldwin, Canamax should get the ball back, be able to run out some of the clock in this one. First down, Canamax with a chance to run out the clock on homecoming night. And in a game, really, Tyler, where we saw some good things, some positive things from Baldwin, trying to take advantage with no... Mike Evans at quarterback for Cannon Mack, which is a big obstacle. Also, Howard at wide receiver not playing. has been dealing with a hand injury. Not playing on the offensive side of the ball, only playing on the defensive end. With a freshman quarterback at home to come in here and respond like it has in the second half. Cannon Mack has to be not satisfied, but definitely excited to be able to come out of this What's what's looking like a victory? Yeah, I mean, Rosario on the tackle on the carry from Walsh for a couple. Yeah, I mean it could be a lot worse for Cannon Mack. If you're head coach Mike Evans, you're you know, you're thinking you're lucky stars. Yeah. You're moving on to next week. And I mean for Baldwin it's it's almost similar to the upper St. Clair loss. Just not playing a complete first half. They come out play a way better second half. They just can't finish in the end. They, they're just too far behind. And it, it almost to, feels like the same way here. Welsh Minson's right there. Also brought down by Chenzo Pacella right at the line of scrimmage. They played a, a very good first half, a very complete first half, and then in the second, it just things just kind of snowballed out of control. Well, Baldwin was playing a lot of catch up in that USC game. This, but this was a little bit different because Baldwin was in command yeah. for most yeah. of the way, other than that Canamac field goal in the first quarter. I mean, I mean you, you look at it, though, if they play the second half in, the, in a complete manner the way they played the first half, you know, you're, I think Baldwin's in this game, if not still Oh, yeah, definitely. Game. But penalties ever so costly, not being able to sustain drives. Giving it away on fourth down is that one that gets into the hands of Welsh. That's one way to uh, have a handoff there, there off the hands. Wow, of uh, Jansma and into the hands of Welsh. And that's just really how the second half's been going for Cannon Mack, though. Well, when you don't turn the ball over, you allow the other team to make mistakes. And sometimes you get a couple of opportune bounces. Things like that can happen as it's fourth down. Fourth and fourth, the 48. The punting team comes on. And, and honestly, their Cannon Mac did not take that much time off the clock. No, not as much as I think they, they really wanted to with Baldwin not being able to stop it. Williams is able to get the punt away. High kick. 
and dropped by Baldwin. Ball on the turf, picked up. Scramble for it, Cannon Mack able to recover. And if there was any hope, Sabatucci sabotaged that again, took it away, grabbed it back for the Big Macs, 223 and counting, and can wind it up. Yeah, and they, Cannon Mack gets a second chance to take even more time off the clock. And again, with the timeouts not being a factor here for Baldwin, it, it is game, set, match. So Cannon Mack is Baldwin already defensively with a couple handshakes to each other. That was a pretty solid effort, but when you turn the football over, when you can't get the snap off and continue to have delay a game penalties, you're just not going to want a football game in a close one like this. Wells gets the handoff and is brought down as the rain begins to fall for the first time. And a breeze blew into the press box just a couple of moments ago. It's starting to get starting to get a little chilly over here at Cannon Mac as it's a light sprinkle for the final two minutes of play. Ball on the 14. Big Max using up all of the play clock now at 14 and counting. Hand off to Welsh. Welsh up the middle to the five. Welsh diving for the goal line. Touchdown, Cannon Mack. 14 yards out, the Big Mac strike again. Zachary Welsh, another touchdown. His fourth of the game. And just really, Tyler, not much more you can say from this one. Just probably the biggest disappointment of the year for Bowling. Yeah, I mean, you, you come in, and with how good Canamax has been, you know, they're down a quarterback. There's that chance. There's that, that hope that's kind of there. And they come out and they play the way they did. And I think, you know, it, it's going to be a tough one to go back home with. But um, you get a, a South Fayette team next week that's not had the best of starts. I mean, they've definitely had their ups and downs. They have not won a game exactly. since I called the game on KDK Plus against Montour. That was in the th that was the third game of the year. Yeah, so they, they've definitely been on a on little bit of a downhill slope. I, so you'll see them next week. And every, the last couple of weeks, I've talked to Bubba, 100.7 star. He's uh, very familiar with South Fayette. He's coached there um, in various programs at South Fayette. I think it was the baseball program he's heavily involved in there. And he was saying how that is a matchup that both teams are really circling right right now where you know that's one that you can get yeah it's almost like the the moon the moon baldwin matchup last year to yeah. end the season i mean that's two teams that struggled all year in conference play if you're baldwin you're looking at that one now after this one is in the box that you can grab that one in section play south fayette pretty much looking at it the same way road test at south fayette first time we'll ever be broadcasting from there as the kickoff bounces and Goes out of bounds. It's picked up into a pretty heavy rain now. Well, you know, Tyler, first game in October. Wake me up when September ends. Well, it's over now. We have bad weather. Finally, for all, well, I mean, finally is not the right word, but for the first time this year, we have what looks like Pittsburgh fall weather. Mm -hmm. Cold, a little bit of, a little bit of rain damp just kind of ugly if this game was played in grass you'd see a bunch of mud flying everywhere well maybe not with a couple minutes left but fighting Highlanders 139 trailing it now by 26 offense back out there on the field McCurak tosses it and Sharp looks to throw down the field incomplete it looks like a little bit of an odd formation like Baldwin was trying to do something there and make a trick play out of it after it was pitched backwards to Sharp and he started running backwards. Was looking to try to connect with Keith Minson. The seniors, though, not able to convert. Brings up second down. Yeah, it's, it's awkward because when, when you pitch out to Sharp, normally he's almost at full steam ahead and whenever he receives the pitch right there backwards and he's not running forward, you know something's up. And just downfield, Minson was covered and the pass just couldn't be completed. 
Second down and 10 at the 35. Three receivers near side, one on the far side. McCurack will pitch it out. Sharp. Not much running room, and it's taken down at the 34. About a yard past the line of scrimmage. That's where he stripped. That's where he slips. Was not stripped to the ball. It was potentially knocked out. Maybe just jarred loose a little bit defensively on the tackle made by Lax. So third down and 10, final minute of the game. And for Baldwin, you saw some good things. The 92-yard run from Andrew Sharp. Score the second touchdown. McCurex pass incomplete. But it's just, again, it's just not enough to be able to sustain offensive drives. Penalties are a killer. You're not going to win games when you commit penalties the way that Baldwin did in the second half. It just gets you into no offensive rhythm. And you really wonder, is that the coaching? Is it communication with the players? I mean, with, from the expression that Dana Brown Jr. showed, continuously not being able to, for Baldwin not being able to get the snap off, I think it was just a lot of the times a lot of communication from the huddle, just not being able to break the huddle quick enough. And some more learning experiences for the young quarterback as McCurack is sacked. Lax on the sack. And 38.9 remaining. Cannon Mack will have time for one kneel down. Yeah, and I think if you're Baldwin, really, you have to ask yourselves, you know, how do we find ourselves in a position where we gave up 27 points in the second half? You know, I mean, with five minutes left in the third, they're still up. 14-10, and then in the fourth quarter, that's just when uh, Welsh exploded three rushing touchdowns. You know, you just have to ask yourself, you know, how how did were we not able to just at least find a way defensively to, you know, still keep them at a halt? You only let up three in the first, and then the 27 in the second half, you know, there, there's got to be some, you know, questions asked of what happened defensively. Yeah, that was a problem, and especially because, I mean, let's just be brutally honest here you know Cannon Mack is going to run the football. Yep. I mean, their veteran senior quarterback is not playing. You know they're just going to try to run it down your throat. And Baldwin was able to stop it in the first half. Yep. Not able to do so in the second half. Final score from Cannon McMillan. The Big Macs win it 30-14 to as the Fighting Highlanders in heartbreaking fashion not able to pull off the upset. Cannon Mack advances to 5-2 and two overall. And Baldwin drops to 1-6, and 30-14. The final here from Kennesburg Memorial Stadium, Week 6, Game 7 of the 2023 WPIL High School football season. Heartbreaker for the Fighting Highlanders as we take a look at our second half highlights. Well, there were some good things from Baldwin. 92-yard run right here from Andrew Sharp. Break off one tackle, two tackles, three tackles. Sharp still going. Almost got caught by the turf monster. But look at the effort. Vince Bracoli, John Kozar lead the way. Right there, he almost tripped at the 30. Maybe he did a Kenny Pickett fake slide, but was able to stay up on his feet. And Andrew Sharp was able to score. Obviously, no fake slide. Is it to run from Welsh to be able to score? A touchdown. That was from 65 yards out. And then the deep passing play. That's honestly, Tyler, one of the plays of the game that people need to be talking yeah. about that fourth down conversion kept that drive alive Walsh was able to score from just a couple of yards out this big play Noah Sicani to help Baldwin maintain what was third and 18 mm -hmm. but then just heartbreak penalties yeah not being able to convert and really just hurting yourselves shooting yourself in the foot and not being able to consistently contain the offensive drive as Cannon Mack was able to run the football into the end zone a couple of times and run it out. So Baldwin's efforts fall short here tonight at Cannon Mack. Big Mac celebrating right near the band and we'll play Upper St. Clair next week. Another non-section matchup and at Peters Township, Mount Lebanon, Week 9. That's a closeout October for the Big Mac section play at home against the Blue Devils. Now for Baldwin at South Fayette next week. And this is it, Tyler. Last three games of the year. At, felt like it went really quick. At yeah. South Fayette, Mount Lebanon at home. Final home game 
And then at Moon, the Moon Tigers on the road against Moon on the Moon to face the Tigers. So the final score, 30 to 14, the Cannon McMillan Big Macs defeat the Baldwin Fighting Highlanders. And once again, Baldwin drops to one and six, Cannon Mac improves to five and two. Section action resumes next week on the road at South Fayette, our first broadcast ever for football at South Fayette. And we hope that you join us then. For everybody on our crew, Jill Wyda, as well as Joey Bonnerty and Gina Bonnerty inside the production truck, Zach Bischoff running our main camera, Ryan Peters running our sideline camera, my guy Joel Nelson running our end zone camera. For Tyler Zeman, I'm Austin Bexler saying so long from Cannon McMillan, repeating the final score. Cannon Mac 30, Baldwin 14. We'll see you next week from South Fayette on the Fighting Hounder Sports Network.